and now hit the X. So see, you have activity. That's what broke. So you'll have, you'll have audio now. Oh, shit. Yep. Uh, someone else talked besides Sean and me. What's up, fellas? What's up? Hello, hello, still hello. On, um... Yeah. So that's going to be all the audio that's coming into your headphone, Sean, is going to be going to the stream now. Yep. Yep. There's Tyler. Yep. Cool. Tyler, say right. hi to the. Uh... Okay. Hi, guys. Bye. Got to go to a wedding. <laughs> all right. See you guys. Yeah. Back at it. We we are also oh okay, we are back. Okay, good. Yeah. The, the video just came back, it looks like. Yeah, we're good. We're good. What happened? <laughs> Wait, wait. So, hold on. Yeah, I can hear you. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, but they hear us. Hello? 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 Yeah, Sean? they should be able to hear me now. Yeah. Hello? Double checking. Mm, yes to Marco. <laughs> no, Sean. <laughs> No, I still no. It should Tyler it should be up now. Horn. It should be up now. I think uh I think uh it's just catching up. Mm. He is full mime. You never go full mime. <laughs> Got it. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Cool. Yeah, yeah. All right. We're good. We're in business. So what I said was what we're gonna do is we are going to act like none of that ever happened hmm? and we what? are going to start the show properly. <laughs> Sean was on strike. <laughs> um, I'm going to delete all of this, and we're going to have a great show because we've got a lot to talk about. Thank you for being so patient. I appreciate everybody who was patient, who wasn't you know, being annoying or getting on our nerves uh, as we troubleshoot the process. So thank you for that. Now I'm going to reset, and we're going to start the show. Here we go. This week... We got huge casting news for Superman Legacy. We got some DCU updates. And Hollywood has gone on strike. So we Finally have... <laughs> yeah. We have a lot to talk about. And we're going to start with the Superman Legacy casting news. But I will admit, right out the gate, it's very weird to have a conversation about this without acknowledging the strike that's going on. So mm -hmm. we are going to talk about that. That is a major conversation. This is like an episode with two main topics because of how big of a deal all this is. So for the sake of this initial conversation, let's not address the strike. Let's just talk about the DC stuff. We will talk about the strike. So we're not, we're not ignoring it. We're going to get to it, but we're going to start with... We're going to start with DC. So, uh, Superman Legacy has added several people to the cast. Uh, this is, of course, the James Gunn movie that is going to begin the new era of DC. Uh, and we have Isabella Mer Merced, Merced playing Hawk Girl, Edie Gathegi playing Mr. Terrific, and Nathan Fillion. Playing Ooh. Green Lantern Guy Gardner. Ooh. Le Nate. A little bit later in the week, we also learned that Anthony Carrigan would be playing Metamorpho. That's a good inclusion. Morpho. Yeah. Cool. Mm. Cool. I didn't Come on. Hear about this until I heard Metamorpho. Uh huh. Now I gotta. Now I'm kind of in. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. I have been on record as saying there's just too much information, too much James Gunn talky stuff, and there was more of that this week. My man James mm -hmm. Gunn, listen, if there's a new social media website, one thing you can be sure about is that James Gunn is going to be on it. 
and he's going to be talking. And he was all over threads this week sharing oh, yeah, information. Okay. So we'll get to that. But the casting that they announced this week had two reactions. One was Kale's, which is, this is pretty cool. They kind of got me, which is how I felt. All right. And the other is, this is too much. There's too many people, too many heroes, too many characters. I'm mm-hmm. right down the middle with that reaction. If you could, <laughs> like, I'm like a, a stick of butter. If you, like, cut, like, the a first bit to butter a piece of toast, that's where I'm at. <laughs> I'm 90%, this is too much, and then just that little sliver is like, ooh, but metamorpho. <laughs> I... <laughs> I think in, in with this reveal, this has to do something with uh, a version of the Justice League, mm. and I think that no, I, I I think it's the butter a piece of toast like that's downfall right. of it. It has ended. Now he's flying solo or something. I see what you mean. Um, I don't like that. I don't like that one bit. Mm. I go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. No, go go. Um, I hope that that's not what we're looking at. Um, I hope what we're looking at is, and James Gunn sort of, sort of talked about it. um, And I I guess I'll just go right to his quote. Um, So in a response to a fan who talked about how there were too many superheroes in the movie on thread threads, uh, James Gunn said, we're entering a world where superheroes exist and have existed for quite a while. They're a part of one side of his world, just like Lois and Jimmy are part of another. That makes sense to me because I've read a lot of Superman comics at this point and, you know, you do see other people that pop up. I mean, my God, right now, all Superman comics feature like 75 heroes. Um, I don't think it's that crazy that there would be some pop-ins, not necessarily people who are going to be all over the story, Hmm. but people who will, you know, make appearances, sure. The, the the problem I have with what you just said is especially in the books, uh, you know, the books having 75 people is those 75 characters are all Superman clones. Right. Uh, the other thing is what Top Lane just said in the in the chat is this feels like Black Adam all over again. I just like we haven't had a super, a solo Superman movie in so long. And now we're going to dilute it by putting Hawk Girl in it. Hey, MP, thank you so much for the super chat. Uh, MP says, I think Gunn is going post-crisis where JLI, Justice League International, is the current Mm -hmm. superhero team. And Superman is not a founder or member. Maybe later becomes Morrison's JLA. That makes makes sense. Especially with the inclusion of Guy Gardner and Metamorpho. That makes a lot of sense. I love that. And the inspiration as well, right? And with uh, right. Uh, right. James Gunn at the helm, that I mean, that's obscure enough that that will uh, mm. uh, satisfy his taste too. I think. Yeah. Hey, what's up, Nerdette? Uh, what's up to everybody who's watching live? Thank you all for joining us. We really appreciate you being here, especially those of you who uh, you know were kind enough to uh, stick around. Um, and I think, Kale, to piggyback off of what you just said and what MP laid out, the authorities' inclusion adds yet another wrinkle because we've heard about how the authority uh could play a role in this film which james gunn is denying now um but if marco's right and this is pre-justice league itself right maybe seeing the authority and the way that they behave leads to superman's impetus to start Mm. the justice league or you know yeah i could see that I could see that. That's cool. Not necessarily with these characters, by the way. I don't know. I think uh, I think they're trying to go different with the casting. Like, if if we're gonna do things differently, I think we should also set different expectations for people's knowledge of the DC universe. It doesn't have to be the big three. It can be a variation at this point because of how Marvel can pull you know from their pockets and be able to capitalize on it. Hmm. Where, but where, that's uh, that's you know what you're talking about is very different from this. Marvel's Marvel's slate is the Avengers, 
right? Everybody you saw on the Avengers, with the exception of Black Widow, who came in the Avengers, but, uh, but I'm, but and I'm Iron saying... Man too. Oh, hold on. <laughs> uh, this was all lined up to build up to the Avengers, and it's their classic lineup. We're not getting the Justice League with Metamorpho and Guy Gardner, maybe. Guy Gardner, but we're not getting it with Metamorpho. That's not going to happen. But why not though? Like, like if this is going to be a different iteration, a different era, why why is that not a possibility? I think you're taking the word "different" and you're using it am very I, loosely. In too trusting? Context. Why not just put Ragman on the Justice League? Keep keep in mind, while Marvel didn't have the rights to all their characters, but the first Avengers film still includes Marvel's big three in continuity. In continuity, Marvel's big three is Iron Man, Captain America, and Thor. And they had Mm. them. Um, They didn't have Spider-Man. They didn't have Wolverine, but they made it work. DC has everybody. Ain't no damn way they would ever launch a universe and have a Justice League movie at some point down the road. I don't think that's phase one, certainly. but And not have Batman or Wonder Woman included alongside Superman. They got to do it. They got to do it. But, But again, that's... That's way down the road from Mm -hmm. now. I think when you're looking at this announcement, what we're looking at is James Gunn trying to add color to the world, trying to establish very early on that this is a world that is already lived in. Yeah. If you want to say anything about the early days of Marvel, everything felt really uh, uh, segregated at first as they established all these different characters who were basically in their year one. Whereas here, we know that this is not Superman's origin. That we're we're, we're leaving origins in the past for the primary characters here in DC. Uh, We know that for Superman, and we can infer it for Batman based on the Batman and Robin movie. Or whatever that was called. Brave and the Bold, whatever it was called. But it, it features a Batman already with a Robin. So... They're going away from the origin stuff. And I, I think that's all James is really trying to do. Establish that this is a lived-in world. We got a $2 super chat from Top Lane. Uh, I think we're getting the terrifics. I also wonder about that. Hmm. Thank you, Top Lane. Appreciate it. Um, speak on that, Kale. Uh, well, you've got um, Mr. Terrific and uh, Metamorpho, who are uh, half of the Terrifics team. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, this could be <laughs> James Gunn could uh, rock a Fantastic Four film before the Fantastic Four. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, and then Sean would extra lose this bet. Do I win the bet <laughs> if if that happens? <laughs> um, MP asks, how do you think Superman, how long do you think Superman has been active for? If I had to guess, I would say not more than like, if you're talking about as Superman, right? Because there's a there's a time where he's like active as Superboy or whatever, right? Um, or as a younger man. Uh, yeah. If you're talking about as Superman, I would say probably less than five, two to three years would be my guess. Oh, really? I was gonna say less than ten. I think easily less than ten. Easily yeah, less than ten. ten. Yeah. More than five, I would think though. More than five. I think so. I think I think he's been at it for a little bit. He's like set. <laughs> I think the problem with that is that the DC heroes are a lot more connected than the Marvel ones. Right. So, you know, one of them is going to get the idea for uh, uh, making a team pretty yeah. early. Um, and then, you know, the big threats also come really quickly you know so that and that's an interesting uh point we didn't get any announcement yet about who the opposition will be do you guys have any speculation on that Mm. lex (laughs) yeah lex it would be cool to get brainiac but the brotherhood of evil no. The Brotherhood of Evil? Wait, is, am I missing something? Oh, wait. <laughs> boo. Chat, boo him. Boo him off the chat. Get him out of here. Ah. 
<laughs> the chat before we even went live already featured booze for Marco. And Where? now they're appropriate. So if you want to get in on that, now would be the time. Uh, shifting gears a little bit, let's talk about the characters that were that we actually got announced. Uh, so we got Hawkgirl. Cool. I'm into that. We just saw Hawkman in Black Adam, which I think is a lot of the reason why people are comparing this to Black Adam because mm. um, it's got you know a hawk, a black person, and <laughs> uh, you know uh, a weird character. Um, I, I'm cool with this. I like Hawk Girl fine. I don't have much familiarity with Hawk Guy, Hawk Man, or Girl. Um, but, hmm. you know, I think that's all the more reason to put her on the screen. Why not? She got a new book coming out this yeah. coming week. Yep. Yeah. Um, and also, I think she's a core league member. Yeah. Yep. Um, you know, going back to the the animated series and obviously further but the most notable one being um the one from the animated series so it makes sense oh so you think she would be like a founding member of the league mm -hmm. yeah i think it, i think it would be a way to start yeah that makes sense to me that makes sense to me um and guy gardner's this universe's guardian you yeah. know guardian lantern Oh, okay, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. Let's talk about that. So Nathan Fillion playing Guy Gardner. Uh, this is an interesting one because if you have if you have a memory that goes back, I don't know the way things change with DC about two weeks. You remember that there was a show coming to Max that featured three different Green Lanterns. And mm -hmm. one of them was going to be Guy Gardner. And it was a period piece every time. I think Guy's was in the 80s or something like that. And that was going to be played. That role was going to be played by an entirely different person. So now Nathan Fillion has been cast in this role. And he's Guy Gardner everywhere. James Gunn was asked about this specifically. And he said, quote, the Green Lantern show is not separate. Nate will play Guy in all parts of the DCU. So what does that mean? That means that any time that Guy Gardner appears in a movie, a television show, an animated, a video game, a fucking audio book, anywhere, this is the actor that will play that character. And that's consistent. That's everybody. Nathan Fillion, though, also had a role in the Suicide Squad. He was TDK. The detachable oh, kid. Yeah, that's right. So that opened up questions for me. Yeah, that was ridiculous. That opened up questions for me, though, about like, okay, so is it ca is that canon then? Like, did he really, like, is that character and him being that character still canon? Does that, right, does right. that question matter? I don't think that question matters, no. Yeah. Because all, all, all of this is a whole new thing. You know, they've said so often that most of the old stuff just isn't isn't canon. But it's that word you used, most, that is what allows people to have these questions. Because Blue Beetle is confirmed to carry over. We know mm. that for sure. And, and you're saying if this is the case, that doesn't. Am right. Amanda Waller, Viola Davis, carrying over. Right. Yeah, but you can't you can't pull a bad bitch like that. Like, I agree with you. I don't disagree. I just ha I'm just wondering, you know, where's the what's the what's the threshold? Like, Peacemaker's carrying over. John Cena's right. going to be around. Yep. I, the threshold is whatever James Gunn wants it to be. I, I think I, I think that's what it is. Is I'm going to pick and choose. This is going to be our baseline, and then we're just going to roll. Right. Uh, top lane says, will they change the ages? Nathan is like 50. Is he going to be the same? Uh, Hal is going to be the same then? Um, and, go ahead. Sorry. And, and this was going to be one of the reasons why I thought it would be post a Justice League or it would be an older Superman because like stuff would have happened. Things would have developed because Nathan, honestly, is probably a bit older. And I don't know that guys portrayed to be more than 40. At most, you know, like 30s, I would say, is the range. 
I, I mean, I could see them kind of flipping it around. Maybe Guy is an earlier Green Lantern mm. than Hal, and Hal comes around a little later. Um, maybe Guy is a, is an example of like a more of a hot headed, not necessarily the way to be a Green Lantern, and then Hal comes around and he does things differently. Um, I think there's a lot of ways they can flip that. Uh, Hawker Hurricane. That's a name I haven't seen here in the chat. So if you're new here, then welcome. Thank you for joining us. I think the Suicide Squad tech is technically part of the DCEU, not DCU. You are absolutely correct. The problem that I'm having, and I think the problem a lot of people are having from a confusion standpoint, is that while that is true, elements of the Suicide Squad are still canon. Mm, so, sorry? Starro. Well, Probably. Um, Starro, Viola Davis playing uh, Amanda Waller, Peacemaker, all that stuff is still canon, therefore probably making their exploits canon, thus making that movie canon, technically, mm. right? That's the confusing element. If Peacemaker Season 2 is canon, Season 1 has to be canon, right? If no. Season 1 is canon, then You're the Suicide Squad it. has like, to be canon. Like, stop. I'm <laughs> not overthinking a, it, It's canon. a long <laughs> thread of just like, oh, but if this if, if this does this and this does this, but uh, it, it, it doesn't matter. Of Rook course it, brain. What do you mean it doesn't matter. This is the podcast. This is what we're here to talk about. Of course it matters. <laughs> yeah, it's the content. Where's the journey? But at the, at the end of the day, like, you're not going to get an answer. <laughs> All right. I just, you know, I just thought we'd make a conversation. We could just go home, <laughs> you know, okay. whatever. That's um, not great. Yeah, whatever. Um, so Peter Safran tried to answer this question. He said, when he spoke to Vanity Fair, the good news is, if you've seen nothing that we've done before, you can watch Superman Legacy, you can watch Creature Commandos, you can watch Peacemaker Season 2, yeah. and you can watch Blue Beetle, all of that. We are trying to minimize audience confusion and maximize their enjoyment. Do you still want to say to me that it doesn't matter, now that I just told you that the guy who runs this is saying they want to minimize confusion when there are all these questions? Yes, because I wasn't listening. That 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 makes sense for you. Yeah, I was responding to something in the chat. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I I think that I think that they should have gotten rid of everything. I understand mm. the desire mm. to keep the stuff around that you like, but this is not the right way to go about it. I don't think. Well, and having Blue Beetle uh, be part of it, it's such an arbitrary line. Yeah, you know they they're making that part of it because. You know, it's the end of whatever. Oh, but don't forget, we still have Aquaman too, right? Like, it. You know, they want to get the 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 jump on everybody's you know potential hype for Blue Beetle, and if that doesn't pan out, they can just push it out of the way. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's 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 ridiculous. Uh, MP says I do sympathize with Sean and wanting a harder hard reboot. Just because I think it's cleaner. I think all these questions that people have had about what does the Flash keep canon, what does it remove from canon, I, I don't think those are good questions that we should be asking. I think ultimately the, the focal point should be a fresh start. And you can't have that when you're carrying stuff over. Hmm. Trying to get yeah, their, okay. their cake and eat it too. Yep. And, and, that's, and that's the story of the DC FU. But All together, then, even on top of that, then you have the other stuff that is just sitting outside. All of that, like nebulously, the Batman yeah. stuff, and then the yeah. Joker. So it's like, right? There's so much there. You know who I'm happy for, though. I'm happiest for one singular person. Right here. That this is. Guy. <laughs> that is Eddie Gathegi, who is playing Mr. Mm -hmm. Terrific. Why? Because this man was done dirty. If you don't know the name and his look isn't familiar to you, maybe you'll remember a movie called X-Men First Class in which he played a character oh, called yeah. Darwin. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Someone whose whole power is adaptability. Survivability. Survive, and he died. <laughs> they killed the black man first, and that black man's power is he can't die like that. <laughs> and they got him. That was they proof. Got him. <laughs> That was proof right there. So I'm happy that not only 
is James Gunn <laughs> bringing him into the fold, but he's giving him Mr. Terrific, I think one of the greatest DC characters that doesn't get enough attention. And we, if, if, if this goes well, like Kale said, we might even get a Terrifics movie. Uh. Is he also and uh, in the Justice League? Has he been a member? I don't know. I don't think so. Um, is this guy also in, uh, what is it, How to Get Away with Murder? Oh, I'm not sure. Mm-mm, I don't know. Oh, somebody will know. I don't know. <laughs> Top lane. The mutant who can adapt to anything didn't adapt to a bomb in his mouth. <laughs> it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. Yep. Uh, Sylv is, oh, welcome, Sylv. Good to see you here. Um, Sylv is advocating for Margot Robbie. As, as Harley. And I think that's another area where it's like, you know what? Margot Robbie, not a problem. Has done a good job as mm-hmm. Harley. I don't have an issue if she comes back. I, I, I think, though, forget about the past with all these people. Like, I would not, I just wouldn't acknowledge what's come before. Yep. At all. It's still I, her. It's still the role, but. Yeah. I mean, she's become sort of tied to it. Like, people recognize her for it now. Well, yeah. that's about to change. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so, I mean, these these casting announcements are cool. I'm into them. Of course, I've been an advocate of, you know, let the work speak for, speak for itself. James Gunn, I feel like every time he talks, is playing damage control. He has to answer a lot of questions that, that people have. Um, clear up a lot of confusion. I kind of wish he wouldn't, but at the same time, if he doesn't, people don't know what's going on. Yeah. Especially like when does this movie come out? Like it's gonna be a long tour of just him giving away the whole movie. I think yeah, and I think uh, I think it was due out um, next or twenty twenty five. They're taking twenty twenty four off. And then I believe the plan was for it to come out in 2025. Somebody somebody better tell him to take 2024 off. <laughs> <laughs> but, of course, now with the circumstances of everything that's going on in Hollywood, you know, we don't know that, that's, that, that it would actually meet that release date. Um, but either way, I think that is smart. I think a year palate cleanser is going to be necessary um, mm-hmm. if the rumors about Aquaman 2 are true. And based on, you know, everything we've seen with Flash, a year off would be smart. And then get things going fresh with Superman Legacy and Creature mm-hmm. Commandos. Which I saw someone ask, what is Creature Commandos? That's actually they're doing an animated series. Um, mm-hmm. And it's going to be like a precursor to everything that we're going to see. And it's going to introduce the theme of this first uh, chapter, which is Gods and Monsters. So it'll be like a proto-Suicide Squad type of thing. Um, it's, it's like a mix of Suicide Squad and uh, Werewolf by Night. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, So we talked about Blue Beetle. And James Gunn once again confirmed, yes, Blue Beetle and a handful of other characters will continue on in the DCU, even though the first DC Studios movie is Superman Legacy. The first DC Studios project is the animated TV show Creature Commandos. I feel like two weeks ago, James Gunn said that Blue Beetle was the beginning of the story of the DC Studios era. Mm-hmm. Yep. Walking it back. To be. Speak less. Speak less. Chillmonger says Margot Robbie is too old. 33 right now. Why is it too old? To play a character that people already associate with her and love? I don't think that's too old at all. I don't look at Margot Robbie and see her age. That's right. not what I'm thinking about. Be real careful. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm excited. That's my final my final thought. I like this casting. I think they nailed everybody. Mm-hmm. Prior to seeing any acting, I, I I the only one of these that I have seen act is Eddie Gathegi. Have have either of you seen any of the other? Oh, uh, Nathan Fillion. What am I saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I've seen a lot of Nathan. Fillion. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, if um, if this guy is uh, the same guy as uh, How to Get Away with Murder, then he's gonna be good. Uh, for me, it was Rachel Bronchin or Boshnahan, 
uh, Mrs. Maisel. Really, really like that show. Great actors. Okay. Oh, but you Rose haven't Lane. seen at the like other than Nathan Fillion any of this slate of actors that we talked about. No. Yeah, I've seen these guys. Yeah. Okay. I, I think Superman Legacy is shaping up nicely. Yeah. I really. I do. am cautiously optimistic. I think that's a good way to be. I really do. It's how I live my life. <laughs> uh, I'm cautiously pessimistic, I think is. Yeah, more, yeah, that sounds right. Apt. So class of Ulysses with a correction. James Gunn said Blue Beetle is the first DCU character. Creature Commandos is the first animated project. Superman Legacy is the first DCU film. Okay. Okay. Right. So Blue Beetle is the first one that will carry over. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's all right. So even even if this movie tanks, James Gunn has this guy and this Blue Beetle in mind. Yeah. yeah. That's, That's fine. Th- allegedly. Yeah. We'll see how the movie does. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. If people hate it, maybe he makes a different decision. But I think the, the – I don't th- – ah, man, I don't think you can get away with that. Because of who the Blue Beetle character is becoming to people now, where, you know, this is, uh, is it the, well, I guess Black Adam was minority led, but. But not like in, in the in name and. Yeah. Uh, or, or rather, yeah. That built I, into the character. Right. I feel like the that aspect of this makes it so that if you remove it from the equation after saying you weren't, that might cause a lot more backlash than, say, recasting um, Ezra Miller as the Flash. Mm. I I could see him recasting the actor and still keeping Jaime Reyes. Sure. Right. Yeah. You know, staying within that bubble, you yeah. know. Yeah, I can see that. Speaking of The Flash, uh-oh. I wanted to give a quick Flash update before we move out of this segment. Flash, flash, flash. Because The Flash now has officially fallen out of the box office top 10 in only its fourth week of release. Dropping 58% in its fourth week with a domestic total of $105 million. To date? Yeah, in North America. Yikes. Yikes, no one went to see this movie. Yep. In its second week, it made $15 million. Second week? That's abysmal. Abysmal. Holy shit. $5 million in its third week. Yo, all right. Nobody went to see these movies. Horrible. But Hmm. it does have... A new first. It has it has accomplished something before any other movie. The Flash is the first new release to hit the blockchain. Huh? I don't know what the fuck that means. Like if, if you don't crypto? Huh? Yeah, like crypto. Yeah, exactly like that. Yes. The Flash is the first movie available on the blockchain. Let me tell you something. They had to lock it away in the digital vault so nobody could see it ever again. <laughs> they should put chains on this fucking movie. Yeah, blockchains. Yeah, they should have put chains on Ezra Miller, who is a, I contend is a criminal. They should have put chains on Ezra. Yep. Yeah. You want to talk about chains? <laughs> nobody gives a damn that the Flash was released on blockchain. What does that mean? Exactly. If you like- don't know what it means. Like, are you just selling that of a file, like the file? Yes. Okay. Exactly. Right. Oh, you really own it. Okay. I can go buy that shit on Blu-ray right now. Well, oh, actually, you really own it. Not, but you yeah, could go, you could go steal it online from the blockchain right now if you wanted. <laughs> Kale, let me ask you a question without without any incrimination involved. Did you pay to see the Flash? Hell no. What's that blockchain I pay, worth? I pay, <laughs> I pay more uh, with the, the for the uh, the casino ads on, <laughs> on 
that I got right in the middle of the movie for some reason. <laughs> I paid more for the French classes it took to translate the copy of the movie I got because it broke into French all of a sudden. <laughs> Unreal. Unfucking real. A wild update. Murphy says it's F- NFT. Yeah. Don't know what that means. Not fucking tolerable. Wait. <laughs> The, my boy. The tables have turned. <laughs> now Marco against NFTs. Remember, yeah, remember how hard we had to fight him about yeah. NFTs? I can't wait. I can't wait till it comes around. AI. Uh, AI. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Not going to happen. Oh, Mike, will. thank you for joining us. Thank you for joining us. Hope you enjoy uh, whatever it is you got going on. If you have any questions about uh, what we've talked about as far as DC goes, share those with us. Um, we've got a lot more to say. About and listen, we talk as much as James Gunn, so we'll tell you whatever you want to know. I, I don't know if we talk as much as James Gunn, but man, it's like threads. <laughs> I Firing threads. away. Yeah. Ha- half of all the new thread posts that have been created are James Gunn. Believe that. <laughs> Spiral says, I haven't seen the movie personally. I have no interest. I didn't agree with keeping Ezra. Yeah, that is, mm-hmm. that is the sentiment around these parts, at least. Um, and if it had to happen, then... I don't see how you put your whole ass into that movie. Like, let that quietly die a death. They talked so much about The Flash, and look at what's happening. Was it worth it, James Gunn? Was it worth it to sell your soul and talk about how this was one of the greatest superhero movies of all time, and it comes out and sucks, and is on the blockchain? Have you seen the, um, apparently, and I don't know if this was parody or not, but you know how Tom Cruise... Put his whole ass out there for the Flash too. Yeah, yeah. Apparently, he did it for Blue Beetle. As well, I guess so. Yeah, <laughs> I, and it feels like parody. I saw this on Twitter, and there were no sources or anything, so I don't like. <laughs> Tom Cruise is going around putting the kiss of death on stuff. Oh my god! Stamping except, it. Except yep. his old movies. What if it's a plot? What if his plot is I'm going to say these movies are great, so no one will go see them. But low key, people go see my movies and they do gangbusters because yep. Tom Cruise wants to be known as the savior of cinema. I mean, he could be. I hope he's right. Well. Yeah, he kind yeah. of has been, in a sense. Just you wait till Barbenheimer. <laughs> Sylph says that's just business. Being supportive and polite. I think you can be supportive and polite without saying it's one of the greatest superhero films of all time. Mm-hmm. That's and, that, a, a, attaching your yeah. name to that. Your stamp of approval. You right. could have seen you could have said you've seen it, you liked it, you enjoyed it, and you're excited to see more. I took gun at his word. We all did. I trusted you. I didn't. <laughs> Don't say we all did. I've been sitting here the whole time. The distrusted. That's right. But but hey, Classy Elise says the Flash is a nine out of ten. I've seen it four times. Bruh, maybe Cruz was right. <laughs> maybe maybe it's the movie we need right now <laughs> because it's pumping movie into the uh, money into the industry. It's the movie we need, but not the one we deserve. Maybe listen. Maybe it's the one we deserve. Quite frankly, uh, Gun lied point blank. He scammed people from their money. Well, that's part <laughs> heavy, and he does say he's kidding. Uh, but he did he lie? Yeah, of course he. I I have no faith that James Gunn sat down, watched the Flash after having just made Guardians of the Galaxy three, and said, Word. "Yeah, this is one of the greatest superhero movies I've ever seen." <laughs> it's not even better than the movies he's made. <laughs> what if he's still doing it? Doing what? What, what if he's still lying? What if all this is bullshit? <laughs> That's what that's what gets me worried, man. What if what if he's not this movie that's coming out? What if it's not even a Superman movie? Superboy. It's like the last minute. Not even. What if it's a what if it's a Batman movie? Hey, listen. If they if you're telling me that David Cornsweat is playing Bruce Wayne David <laughs> and uh the, the the woman they cast for for Lois is playing uh who would she be Catwoman? Catwoman makes the most sense. Sure. Mr. Terrific or Eddie Gathegi can play uh, uh, Riddler. Ooh. 
that's good. Yeah, you're welcome. The guy playing Metamorpho could be Clayface. Well, the guy, that's a great Ooh. one, but the guy, that guy already actually was in the Gotham television show, and he played Victor's ass. Okay. What? Yeah. Yeah. Nathan Fillion, he could, he, could, he could play Clayface. Okay. We've it done it. Is... <laughs> we've, cat we've put this situation up better than... The lying James Gunn himself. <laughs> Consider it resolved. <laughs> is oh, um, Nathan Fillion going to get in the way for you of Guy Gardner? Like, are you going to see I, him first? No. I worry. No? Like, who has ever seen Guy Gardner, first of all? I worry Nathan Fillion is going to water down Guy Gardner. How do you mean? I don't think Nathan Fillion is tough enough. I think oh. he uh, he's mm. too charming. I think he's too... He's goofy. Goofy. Y'all got to watch Buffy the Vampire Slayer season seven. Because <laughs> he was... Or season six. Or, no, season seven. <laughs> he was the villain uh, in that season. And it's not the Nathan Fillion you're used to. Really? I don't yeah. know. Uh, granted, it was 20 years ago. Um, but, yeah. You can only get better, right? I hope. <laughs> I hope we're getting better. Um, if you think we are, head on over to patreon.com slash the comics pals. It's the best way to support the show. Thanks to everyone that is watching us live. Thanks to everyone who watches us at any time. We appreciate you. A lot of people showed up today. A lot of people showed up today. I'm very, very happy to see all of you. Um, you guys make our Saturdays fantastic. And we hope we do the same for you. If that's the case, head on over to patreon.com slash the comics pals where you can support us and get some bang for your buck. Um, we are always trying to offer you as much as we can over there. We've got a weekly newsletter that goes out uh, where you get a, a slice of each of our lives. Um, we've got the book club poll that's up there every month where you get to vote and influence what book we're going to be reading for the book club this month. Pulp won the Ed Brubaker sean phillips centric book club poll so we'll be recording that soon and it'll be out uh the first tuesday of august which is august 1st so that oh, should be hey. a lot of fun um exclusive show palling around if you're not a member of our patreon you've never heard it uh it's a really good show i think we talk about whatever we feel like talking about and it gets wild sometimes so you learn a lot more about us if you're interested in who we are and you get a nickname and a shout out right here on this show. So I want to give a special shout out to the best pals in the universe. Thunderstruck, Rebecca Alejandro, and the Hound of Justice, Atomic Hound, who is celebrating a birthday today. And I want to say a very, very happy Comics Pals birthday to Atomic Hound and his, I believe, great, uh, great nephew, I believe he said. Wow. Uh, we're sharing a birthday like today. Yeah. So happy uh, birthday. This would be his uh uh uh, uh platinum jubilee. Yes. I don't wanna I don't wanna dox him. But just in case. That's one of uh, one of the the most um central people in our community, someone whose value uh, cannot be understated yep. or, or overstated, quite frankly. Um Atomic Hound is an incredible human being who has provided so much value to our community, has been a huge supporter of ours since day one. So huge thank you. Um, if you guys ride with us, we ride hard for you. So thank you. Um, also want to say thank you to the Night Stalker, Harris Dijinsky, Brian Demolisher Del Pozo, Kefis the Incorruptible, Momentum Mike Elliott, Starcross Catherine, Catherine Stars, who... May or may not want me to say this right now, but it's, it's also... It's her Platinum Jubilee. <laughs> yeah, say that shit. Say that. <laughs> she knows why. Say that. Uh-oh. Happy birthday. You have been a supporter of this from day one. Before there was a Patreon, before there was a live video, before even before there was a Comics Pals proper. So thank you. Uh, you absolutely know how much you mean in my life. I appreciate you. And uh, you mean a lot to this community. Uh, our, our resident cheerleader. Uh, Dan the Truth Trudeau. Joel Justice. Jalen the Sanguine Sorcerer. Neon Knight the Cosmic Avenger. 
Super Shenran the Conqueror. I want to also add. Okay. So this we've wondering. got an, we've got <laughs> we've got two editions. Oh oh. We've got Marvelous Mike and Mackenzie. Hey. The Marvelous family. Hey. Oh, okay. The Marvels. The Marvelous is. The Marvelous is. The Marvelous is. <laughs> hmm. uh, the Marvelous. Um, so Mike and Mackenzie are a father daughter duo. Mike. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hell yeah. Yes. Mike is actually, though, one of the most celebrated, if not the most celebrated and popular, super powered people walking in the Pals verse. Everybody knows. Marvelous Mike. Why? Because he's on television. He's Whoa. got a television show where every week he stops crime, leaves the kids with a nice little message, and goes home to his family, which includes Mackenzie. Little did Mackenzie's parents know that one day she too would develop powers and actually join Mike in his mission to eradicate evil. In the streets of the Palsverse. Now, of course, everybody thinks, hey, this is just special effects. Not so. Mike and Mackenzie are incredibly powerful. Mike, for his part, can alter his density. He is incredibly physically strong. And he's got a lot of charm. So much charm that sometimes he can influence people's actions. But he doesn't use his powers for evil. He uses his powers for good. He gets on national television every single week and tells children to eat their vegetables and drink or take their vitamins, just like the Hulkster. <laughs> wow. Absolutely. The vitamins. Love that. <laughs> eat your vegetables and drink your milk, kids. Yeah. Absolutely. And for Mackenzie's part, well, her powers didn't shake out exactly like her dad's. But make no mistake, she is a powerhouse in her own right. Why? Because she can go invisible. Ooh. So, if a situation that Mike and Mackenzie find themselves in requires a bit of stealth, well, Mackenzie can get in anywhere she needs to go. Because she's not just invisible, she can also go intangible. A ghost. Okay, okay. Ideal, yeah. And so... When Super Shenran f first touches down on Earth, Marvelous Mike is the first hero that everyone's looking to to save the world. But he's going to need a lot more help than that. So, if you want to help Marvelous Mike and Mackenzie in the Palsverse, join up. Patreon.com slash the Comics Pals. Thank you all for joining us. It'll be hard to have for Mackenzie to have a uh, career on TV. I think. <laughs> yeah, being invisible. Uh -huh. Yeah. And now to the weather. <laughs> well, it's, it, you know, it's, it's Mike's show. It's Mike's show. All right. We have a lot more show of our own to do. Uh, oh, before I move on. If you want to watch this show live, that's every single Saturday on YouTube.com slash The Comics Pals at 10, 15 a.m. Eastern. Uh, next week, we're going to start the show a little bit earlier at 10 a.m. Eastern because we've got some stuff we got to do. Um, so we're going to start the show a little earlier next week. It'll be 10 a.m. Eastern. Every other week, add those 15 minutes, 10, 15 a.m. Completely forgot about that. Thursdays at 6 p.m. Eastern for Pals Pulls. That is where we review comics. If you want to influence what we review on that show, you can head on over to Twitter and vote in the listener pick poll. Up now, right? Yeah, it's up now. Join our Discord. Come hang out with us. We're always having a fun time over there. Okay, uh, we have a listener comment to get to. Uh, Kale, do you want to tackle this? Yup. Awesome. Yeah. Two shakes of a kale tail. Okay, this comment is from Joel Justice on Discord. What's the most hype you've ever been for a comic just to be disappointed by the comic? What's a comic you thought would be terrible and was actually really good? Wow. Um, all right. 
I'm going to start with the first part, which is what I was looking forward to and then it was bad. This might be my biggest disappointment in comics. Um, I might be forgetting some things too, but it absolutely Civil War 2. Mm. Wolf. 150%. Yeah. I don't know if anybody was more excited than I was for Civil War 2. A website that we worked with for at that time, uh -huh. I couldn't stop writing articles about that damn book coming out. <laughs> And it was tied to, you know, the Civil War movie was on the horizon. There were so many things yeah. happening. And then Civil War II came out, and wow, did that suck. I think for the first one, uh, Heroes in Crisis, that was, mm. I was so excited because Tom King, like, finally was getting some, like, an event. It was going to be this, this moment for him in his career, especially coming out of a hot streak. And it just flopped did not care for it yeah very disappointed because i event, really wanted that book to work event leviathan too yeah that's right uh you know mine i think is inferno mm. um and sort of that closing of the chapter of jonathan hickman's run on the x-men i just man i think they whiff that hard um, and I was looking forward to it so, so much. Because I was in, man. Yeah. Um, as for the other half of the question, uh, what's a comic you thought would be terrible but is actually really good? Uh, back when I, Tyler's not here, so I can say this. Uh, back when we were reviewing Spawn, I was genuinely having a great time. I really enjoyed, uh, I think it was King Spawn. King Spawn was the was the one that we yeah. kind of thought was really good, yeah. Yeah. Um, man, I had a great time with Spawn. Never read Spawn before, but I was having a blast. I didn't have a pick for this. I couldn't think of anything. That's my yeah. pick. I completely agree. We read Spawn because there was a milestone issue. We're just like, let's do it. Yeah. And then, But people really showed up. That's one of our most watched <laughs> videos ever, which is crazy. Um, but then we kept on. And as it turned out, I at least ended up really enjoying it. So that would be my answer as well. Um, Dr. Atlantis. So it is a very indie book um, by Julius Fowler, sort of steampunk. And I remember I was doing the rounds at New York Comic Con looking for small publishers. I got this first trade. And afterwards, I was going through it, uh, like through all the books that I got, came to this one, and I loved it. Had so much fun. It was written so well. The art was, it, it was good, and it progressively got better. And you can see the, it was all done on Kickstarter, so you can see like the growth as well in the art and in the storytelling. And it was awesome. And um, a few years go by, and this past New York Comic Con, I found the guy he had five more volumes. So he, it has continued to grow. And I'm like, yo, Shit. I need to get your stuff. Like, like I need this. That's pretty and cool. It was, it was so, so cool to see. Um, so yeah, so shout outs because a uh, really, really good book. Uh, Ian Alley Seals uh, is, let me double check. Yeah, it's on the, on the words. So thank you, Joel, for the question. Uh, we've got some answers in the chat. Uh, yeah, yeah. Spiral Storm says, same here. I was excited for Civil War 2, but I was terribly disappointed. Uh, Aaron Ruiz says, Secret Empire. Oh, wow. Mm. Wow. Wow. Okay. Oh, yeah, because you love that one. Oh, yeah. I think that's top three best Marvel events. Uh, top Lane insane. says, Three Jokers. MP says, Three Jokers. It's good. Yeah. It's a good one. Uh, top Lane also, on the other half of the question, says, uh, Why the last. The Last Man on Earth? I think, yeah, just Why, the last, just why the last Man. Yeah. yeah. Was a great surprise. And then Classy Ulysses says that uh, Irredeemable was underwhelming. Mm. I mm. like that. I like that. Um, I think, Kale, you got me a... Uh... I was going to say, yeah. Yeah. Is yeah, it, it really Irredeemable good. or the other one? I read I them think... both, and I like okay. them both, so... Okay. Um. Yeah, damn, Three Jokers doesn't get a lot of love. I, I really, I got a lot out of that. I don't know. Yeah, you had fun with that one. Yeah. Um, 
Thank you, by the way, for the super chats. Super chats are open if you feel like you want to super chat. We appreciate that, of course. Um, and we are going to do a draft today if we hit the likes goal. Now, we're already, you know, doing well. So I'm going to set the likes goal at 25. Let's see if we can do that. If we can hit 25, and maybe I'll raise it again, depending on how quickly you guys do it. <laughs> but if we do... We will draft a team of Earth heroes only to defeat World Breaker Hulk. That is the World War Hulk version of the Hulk. Oh, okay. Google's War Breaker. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Earth heroes. What does that mean? <laughs> Comics. Uh, does that include the Silver Surfer? Right. <laughs> yeah. Not quite. Uh, all right, we've got some news to do. We've got some 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 things to chat about that happened this week in the news, um, and we're going to kick things off. We're going to kick things off with James Tinian because James Tinian has a new book coming out. What? Yeah. Yeah, he's always got new books. That, coming that's out. true. Yeah. That, 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 that's not saying a lot. James Tinian always has something <laughs> yeah. coming out. But I think this one's actually pretty exciting. So James Tinian is working on a Dracula book. Hmm. He's teaming with Martin Simmons, who is, of course, a frequent collaborator of his. They did Department of Truth together. Most, rec yeah. most recently, we saw, saw Martin Simmons on the Swan Songs book. Mm -hmm. um, oh, yeah. Okay. Made, yeah. Ooh, yeah. and so they're, that they're going to be teaming up to tackle Dracula. Um, that fits real good, uh, and specifically the Universal Dracula, Universal, Universal Monsters, Monsters, yeah, yeah. Uh, which you know is branded Dracula, but that's like the Dracula you think of when you think of Dracula, I guess. Mm. Uh, that's exciting, and with Martin Simmons, that's <laughs> that's going to be cool. Yeah, yeah right. Um, and so I'll read a little bit from the press release. Uh, so it's a four issue comic book limited series. Um, okay. The first mini, issue, mini. sorry? A mini, it's going to be a mini. Yeah. Cool. The first issue is coming out Wednesday, October 25th. So that's appropriate timing. I like that. Um, and it says the, the comic book miniseries will unfold over four suspenseful issues with the first installment plunging readers into the eerie world of Dr. John Seward after he admits a seemingly delusional new patient to his asylum, recounting chilling tales of a demonic entity residing next door. The skeptical doctor attempts to rationalize the unexplainable, but his adopted daughter Lucy mysteriously succumbs to the malevolent influence of the enigmatic oh. Count Dracula. This is going to rule. Yeah, I dude. think so. This is straight up from Dracula the novel. Oh, is it? Like the uh, the enigmatic patient or whatever is probably Renfield, Dracula's mm. sidekick. Oh. And Doctor Seward, I think, is one of the one of the three guys who uh, teams up with Jonathan Harker and uh, not Lucy, but. Uh, Mina to go and, and fight Dracula like in Bram Stoker's Dracula the actual you know book mm. oh this is gonna rule oh man yeah Damn, I'm all right. I'm I'm excited for this yeah this is cool as hell I have no relationship to Dracula mm -hmm, same but I, I I feel like there's there's a lot there and I kind of like I kind of want to go back um, and I've wanted to go back and read Bram Stoker's Dracula, um, but I just haven't gotten around to it ever. This is going to give me that reason. Bram Stoker, I've read it a couple times. It can be a dry read, but then there are insanely exciting bits. Oh, like yeah. they're doing they're doing a film about the. Um, uh the voyage i can't remember the ship's name the voyage of dracula to you know the new world or whatever um and 
in in Bram Stoker's Dracula, you read all this through like the um, the captain's logs or whatever, like his letters. letters and journals. But this film is going to be about all of a sudden what you know why this voyage has been cursed and there's a monster on board uh, and it's all like dramatically told in bram stoker's dracula it's one of my favorite parts of the book i'm beyond excited about this i cannot believe G- tinian's got me holy shit <laughs> all parts is tinian not the king of horror right now yeah right now yeah it might be yep. he literally snatched that crown off yeah. the head of, I guess, what, Cullen Bunn? Yep. Easily. Oof. That's not a hard snatch. <laughs> I, yeah. I don't disagree, to be honest. Um, I think James Tinian has the profile, the name value. And yeah. quite frankly, the stories have been great. Got the talent to back it up, too. Yeah. 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 So this, this is going to be cool. Um, Dan says, I'm very curious what Sean's take on the novel would be. You'll find out, I guess. I'm gonna. I'm, I want to read it, so um, I'll try to get that done and let you guys know what I think. Um, we should make it a book club. <laughs> <laughs> I'll totally do a book club, right? And by the way, yeah, October 25th again is the date. Um, nice. So this, I'm excited for this. I also wanted to respond to Dan's earlier comment. How would Mike's charm powers work if pitted against my truth telling abilities? You can't be influenced to tell a lie. Hmm. And I also feel like they're two paragons of, you know, it'd be like, it would be, I don't know, like, geez, what would it be like? <laughs> Superman. It would be like two supermen going against each other. But like, you know, your idea of Superman, not like the written reason that they, you know, fight all the time, but like, right. you know. I, I responded to that. I said, well, I pit two bad bitches against each other. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. Well, um, let's talk about let's talk about Miss Marvel. And no, you keep doing this to me. Hey, she's dead. Right. Whoops. Nope. She's not dead. What? The the. The biggest shock of the year. Miss Marvel returns. Let's see. Checks notes. When was Fallen Friend again? Oh, yeah. This Wednesday. She died two weeks ago. This whole cycle has been three months maximum. Jeez. And now we know she's coming back with a new number one. Miss Marvel, the new mutant. On screen right now, I have the variant. She's back. <laughs> what? I have the the variant cover from Art Germ Entertainment Weekly. Got the scoop on this uh, when they learned that Miss Marvel was coming back. What? She's being resurrected through Krokoan technology as a mutant. This wasn't did, telegraphed did at all. She's gonna be a mutant. Yeah, I know. Marco with a good bit. Yes. <laughs> hey, it doesn't happen often. <laughs> um, that I think everyone knew would happen. You know, <laughs> we 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 called it on here day one. We're not the only ones. A lot of people, you know, figured it out. Um, that's not that interesting. I'm interested in two things. One is this fire design. And McKelvey with the costume design again. Yeah. Jamie yeah. McKelvey, once again, he did Captain Marvel. He did Miss Marvel's original design and now the new design. This is heat. I can't believe how nice this costume is. Love the the uh, puffs, gloves. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, cool. He did the... Um, he did the uh, the the young X Men when they came back in Bendis's run as well, and they had those. I love it. I like the little accent X right on the shoulder. Yep. Yeah, very subtle. So, yeah, this whole thing is fire. And I don't know if you're going to talk about this, Sean, but um, in his design notes, 
he mentions that um uh what's her name Amon Vellani mm. she wanted Miss Marvel to have have those big chunky yellow boots mm. so They're that's cool. really cool she, yeah. that she uh that she got to have uh that little bit of say in it I think that rules well speaking of Vellani uh that's the other part that I thought was interesting which is that Iman Vellani uh is writing this comic oh yeah She's going to be co-writing it with Sabir Prezada, who wrote for the Miss Marvel television show. So they're going to be huh. teaming up once again to tell this story uh, with art by Carlos Gomez and Adam Gorham. Um, two wow. very, very talented artists, yeah. by the way. Gorham, wow. Yeah. So they, they put together a really great creative team. They even included Sarah Pacelli to do the wow. covers. So okay. the main covers will be Sarah. I wonder if this will give Miss Marvel the the juice that she sort of needs again. You think to to get her out of the Spider Man book? Uh, but do we think that this is going to be an ongoing? I feel like this is going to be a mini, you know, ties into the moment, and then we're done. Cashing in on the short term. That's how most of these books are, to be honest. But I don't think they should do that if they want to. Well, uh, they shouldn't do it. Period. <laughs> With like, the book. Well, they shouldn't do these short-term cash grabs. Oh, oh. Well, you know the industry. I disagree. I think this is really smart, and the way that everything went down with Miss Marvel left a bad taste in my mouth. Hmm. Um. But in the last five years, when was Miss Marvel as relevant as she is now? Other than the uh, forget outside of comic stuff in comics, when was she more relevant than she's been in the last three months? I didn't even know that she's still relevant. <laughs> We've never really. talked about her this much. Ever. Yeah, but just because you force her death, does that make her relevant? Like, mm. um, I mean, I think if I think if you tell if you if you're telling a story, and you're doing something that people are interested in, whether they're mad about it or otherwise, we're talking about it. And mm. now you have an opportunity to give her a great redesign and to give her a creative team that is genuinely interesting. I really don't I, – I can't even think of a better way to get some buzz around this character that was dead. She wasn't – she was dead for years before we saw her bite the bullet in Amazing Spider-Man. Yeah. That's – yeah, that's what I'm saying. Oh, so therefore, like, can we really say that? I, I'm saying she – yeah, I'm saying she wasn't relevant. So this – bringing her back you know unfortunately this way will give her the juice that the character needs you know and and hopefully put her back on the stands with a good team and with a good you know uh, hopefully a good story yeah and people who like Iman Vellani which I think a lot of people do mm -hmm. um, they see this they might say hey I'm going to jump on board. They see this cover. They say, wow, I want to read this. She's a mutant now. Wow, that's pretty cool. What she was, what she always should have been, by the way. If it wasn't for the Fox Marvel drama, she would have been a mutant. What was she, uh, Inhuman? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think this is the right way forward. Now, of course, to Kale's point, really it's about what happens after this. This is yeah. going to do fine. This will sell decent. It's all great. Can they sustain a Miss Marvel ongoing after this? Mm. That's my question. And I don't think the answer is necessarily yes. Unless they bring on a hot creative team. Yeah. Like once once the fun of Iman writing kind of wears off, you know, she goes away in three issues or something. Well, it's, uh, she's co-writing it. Mm-hmm. The, so they the have like the entirety though well you could you could start and then continue you know and then someone can take over minimum this issue right sure, sure. 
but the one of the writers on the Miss Marvel show is were also on this. Yeah. Oh. Okay. So, you know, reportedly a, a lot of people really like the show. So there is some assumption there that it could be good. And I wonder how directly it ties into the show now. That is, I think, the other question. Hmm. But if you look at this cover, one thing you will notice, or at least I think we're supposed to get out of it, she very, very clearly still has her stretch powers. Yeah. yeah. That is the that is the most shocking thing about this because I was convinced they would reset her with the MCU powers. But that's not what's happened yet. Mm, she'll have to go through some sort of cosmic event or whatever. Yeah, maybe. We don't we don't know yet. I think but but again, she's a mutant. What do mutants often have? Secondary mutations. I could mm. easily see that developing as a secondary mutation. That'd be so convenient. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Welcome to mutants. <laughs> Emma Frost developed her her secondary mutant mutation to survive a bomb being dropped on Genosha. Like <laughs> they killed everybody else. Hmm. Convenient. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Dan says, was the death necessary to hype this, though? Uh, could they have made her a mutant without killing her? I don't think so. Yeah. I, I think, I think, especially given the mutant status quo, I think mm -hmm. that's the easiest way in. Yeah. I, I don't, I don't care that she died. Like, I don't have a problem with her dying. I think any character can die. I have a problem with the way she died. And yeah. not even the way she, where she died. It was an amazing Spider-Man. I felt like there would have been, a, there could have been a, 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 a bigger profile. But then again, I say that, was that not one of the biggest issues of the year? Yeah. It was the biggest conversation piece of the year, for sure. sure. Yeah, but yeah. Probably one of the biggest selling issues of the year, though. ASM, Amazing Spider-Man's been number one every week. Well, and, and that being... Probably. And that being a landmark death as well for collectors, like, yeah, I can see that. Chill says, do you think Sabir Pazada knows of secondary mutations? I think Marvel's editors do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's all that matters. They're working in collaboration. Yep. Um, I'm, I'm excited for this. They got me back. They got me. Okay. Uh, they don't have me, so... <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> We're a fair there, and a fair and balanced podcast. Was there was there any expectation that Sean wasn't going to get back in on this? No. Yeah. Easy. All right. To be fair, there wasn't an expectation that I would. <laughs> um, okay. That's that's, fair. <laughs> that's the shock. <laughs> All right. You want to talk about shock? Let's talk about how shockingly good. Hmm. These Deadpool 3 set photos are. Oh, I'm so excited. This looks cool. Yeah. Even Kale has to give it up. Oh, my friend. Was it your first day on the podcast? <laughs> <laughs> you don't think you don't think that these set photos, which were initially a leak, but I think um uh yeah. Marco puts the quotation marks accurately. We know Ryan Reynolds' history with leaks. Mm -hmm. um, but then it became official, and now we're seeing pictures of Deadpool and Wolverine from the set of Deadpool 3. Um, and I have to say, these, these look really good. Really good. They look really, really good. I'm even more excited for this film now. They had me, and this is just further confirmation that I should have trusted Ryan Reynolds to do his thing. This is a, a pet project. He loves it, and he's going to treat it with that. And now we get this with Hugh Jackman. Oh, come on. Yeah, okay. Good. No, you know what? I'm going to say it. Mm -hmm. I don't like it. Piece of shit. Oh. Why? I don't care about this. I think it's too too little, too late. Fox, and uh, 
I think I think that yellow is garish and, and ugly. Do you like what? the brown suit better? I uh, no, actually I do like the yellow suit better on uh, on Wolverine. I still like it. I still like it. You're wrong. I'll take wow. that hit. For Deadpool 3, Marco, you're, I'll you're take just that. You're wrong. Hit. Wow, I'm shocked. No. I just don't like it. Maybe it'll look different uh in action. I think I think this looks bad. All right. So I, go ahead. I think it looks bad compared to the stuff that has come before. What? You think that this uh, meaning go ahead. In in the history of superhero costumes. Okay. Wait. Not not like not like like I would definitely rank this above Wolverine costumes in, you know, Fox films. Okay, all right. I was about to have a conniption. <laughs> but compared to like, you know, the the modern costumes we get, I think this doesn't look good. Mm. So I love this. Um, I think that both characters look fantastic. Um, Deadpool, for, for his part, I mean, I've never seen a more comics accurate. It's, it's Deadpool. Yep. Like, they didn't change anything. He has his swords. He has his patches. They chose, like, a deeper red. It, I feel like I had a toy that looked exactly like this when I was a kid. For and, both of them. Right. Well, right. The wolf. So the Wolverine costume, this is closer to like astonishing X-Men um, than more traditional. You'll notice that he does have the full sleeves. I read that the reason for that is actually because Hugh Jackman uh, had a bout with skin cancer. And as a result, he's more susceptible. So he had to cover his arms up. That's what I read. I don't know if that's factual, but I know he did have skin cancer. So yeah. that makes so, sense um, to me. He would absolutely take a ton more precaution, even if he weren't susceptible right and mm -hmm. i'm not going to criticize that obviously everybody wants to see the guns you know we want to see the arms james guns <laughs> <laughs> no he needs to go away for a while we, we, we want to see the we want to see the arms but if the guy's dealing with something like that we have to support him there's no yeah. issue i think it looks great the hair is even a little tad little bit pointy on wolverine so they gave him that too i think they tried hard i really do yep agreed and they failed Ugh. Man, <laughs> wrong, just wrong. And I'm supposed to get roasted for my takes? Come on, this guy's wrong. I agree. MP says, have we finally reached a point in live action comic book movie making where we're not embarrassed by traditional costumes? Yes, <laughs> we have come a long, long fucking way from those s secret agent suits that the X-Men had to wear in the initial X-Men movies from the... Galactus bullshit, the, the 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 cloud from Fantastic Four: Rise of the Silver Surfer, and one of the most disrespectful moments in a comic book movie ever, which is of course the opening of X Men Three: The Last Stand, where the mutants oh, are right. fighting a Sentinel in the Danger Room, and the only part of it that we see is the head. I wanted to leave the theater at 15 years old. I was so mad. But yes, uh, what's funny is we're coming back around to a point where we should be embarrassed to see them, especially these two. Oh, my God. Wow. Just incorrect. Also, uh, I want to say that I accidentally went live on Twitch uh, at some <laughs> earlier point. That's so so funny. Yeah, I didn't even realize that. So. Uh, Kefis and my sassy pet rock. There, I, I haven't been ignoring you. I just didn't even realize we were there. Um, oh, I wouldn't pulled. Uh, I wouldn't pulled Silva out of there uh, earlier. <laughs> oh shit. Okay, so my my bad. Um, uh, damn. Sorry, you two. But uh, let's see. Classy Ulysses says I like DP one and underwhelmed by Deadpool two. So Ryan is fifty fifty for me. I'm cautiously optimistic for Deadpool three. Um, I mean, I don't even like the Deadpool movies. Oh, that's right, man. Yeah. Not a fan. I, th I think I'm. I think I'm the only fan of some of those. I enjoyed Deadpool one. No, yeah. that's all I needed. <laughs> Word MP Kale the curmudgeon. I'm like I'm like Wolverine when it comes to um, takes like this. I'm the best at what I do, and what I do 
is disagree with absolutely everyone. <laughs> Deny and be contrarian. So, of course, we know that this movie is shut down. Mm. Yeah, not only can Ryan Reynolds not ad-lib, now he can't even act. Can't even act. Well, so that means he's probably still doing it. Whoa! <laughs> Just kidding. That was an easy joke. And we know why. We're going to talk about why in just a few moments. But before we get to that, this is a show that talks about heroes and villains. We've talked about some heroes today. Now we have to talk about a villain. Uh oh. A man that I never thought I would think of as a villain, but is definitely one now. I'm talking about Mr. Bob Iger. Oh, okay. I had to look at the show notes to see what the hell you were talking about. <laughs> they just popped it up, yeah. <laughs> now, Bob Iger has been in the news a lot this week. Part of it is because of some comments he made about the strike. We're going to get to those comments. But he also talked about Marvel, and he talked about Star Wars. In an interview with CNBC, he discussed the fact that Marvel and Star Wars would both see their money and creative cut back in the coming years. Mm. Uh, this is what Bob said. You pull back not just to focus, but also as part of our cost containment initiative, spending less on what we make and making less, making less content is what he meant. Yeah, yeah. Um, he said, Marvel is a great example of that. It had not been in the television business at any significant level. And not only did they increase their movie output, but they ended up making a number of TV series. Frankly, it diluted focus and attention. Now, hmm. I agree with everything he said. I think he's right. Hmm. I think that the television shows absolutely diluted the water. And I also think that there's too much. But I also, also believe that the problem is never too much. It's not good enough. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. If, if, sorry, go. No, go for it. No, if, if, to your point, if you made quality content, we'd be coming back, right? Like, I think that sounds good for star wars because a lot of what's been released has been mediocre to relatively good which right, fine but it's been trending in the wrong way and i think the same for marvel tv show content uh i've not yet sat down to watch uh, what is it uh invasion secret invasion. and i plan to once it's collected like once everything's out i'm just gonna do it all in one uh but I don't know. I've been seeing mixed stuff. I think the quality of some of the shows is decreased with exception here and there. So, yeah. I think that the shows, some of them I think are great. Mm -hmm. I think some of the shows are truly awesome, and I enjoyed them. Others I haven't even finished. I have gone to the movies to see every single Marvel movie that has been released in the last 15 years. There are Marvel shows I have not finished. That's not good. Obviously, I'm not the barometer, but I'm a Marvel diehard. If I'm a Marvel diehard and I can't even get through this shit, then what's the average person doing? Right, right. Secret Invasion. I think it's great. I'm really enjoying it. Shouldn't be a show. No doubt in my mind. No, oh, that it should be? It should not be a show. Oh, it should not be a show. Okay. No way. Can you speak on that, oh. actually? Because I've I've not watched it yet, and I'm, I'm curious. Have you ever read uh, The Secret Invasion? Okay. Mm -hmm. So, to me, Secret Invasion could easily have been a phase of Marvel. Because it's <laughs> built around the idea that they're... Go ahead, Gil. Should have been a phase of Marvel. <laughs> yeah. It's built around the idea that there are people walking among us who are secretly scrolls. If you paid attention to the, the initial Captain Marvel movie, it's all about the scrolls. 
And I thought, oh shit, yeah, they're setting this up. Like we're going down that road. Captain Marvel 2, in my opinion, in my mind, was clearly meant to be called Captain Marvel 2 Secret Invasion. Hmm. But because of Disney Plus, they cut that and made it a Nick Fury, Ben Men- or a Nick Fury, Telos, uh, Samuel L. Jackson, Ben Mendelsohn, um, you know, espionage, team yeah, team up show. Yeah. It's working, but it would have worked a lot better on the big screen, I mm. think. There's too much. If it if it wouldn't have been made a movie, right, Moon Knight, would they have made a movie out of that? Fuck no. Not out of think? that. Oh, I th- mm, definitely not out of that. And if they were gonna make, if they were gonna do something with it, then it should have been a movie. Yes, yeah, I think that for sure makes a lot of sense. When you look at these shows, you can see where the budget didn't go. Look at She Hulk. All the bad conversation around that. Yeah. What else started around the time of the Disney Plus shows? The conversation around VFX artists. And creators, CG, CG creators, being overworked and overrun. There's too much. There, there's literally so much that there just aren't enough people to work on it all. Yep. Hmm. That's crazy to think about. They put everything they had behind streaming. It's been a bust. And now the movies are going to suffer for the sins of the streaming service. And that's brutal. Because they're going to lose their budget. Oh, because you're saying the shows pull from the movie budget? I'm saying that I'm assuming that, you know, there's a there's a there's a collective amount of money that they're looking at across all platforms. And they're going, whoa, we need to pull this back. Yeah. If but if this is a cost saving measure that can be translated into the movies, I think that's a good thing. At the very least. And if they need to... Like, oof, who knows what's even on Disney Plus anymore? I got, I got rid of it, so I don't know. <laughs> I mean, it's all the stuff that was. Yeah. like. Uh, to Dan's point, yeah, more special series for second-tier characters like like Werewolf by Night. That was cool. But but those are, that's the kind of focus and attention you need to give a show. That's, that's, that's the quality aspect of it. It's different. It's creative in reference to Werewolf by Night. Mm -hmm. Um, I didn't even care for it that much, but a lot of other people did. And I'm with that. There should be things like that. Fuck me. If people are into it and it's interesting and it's different, to me, that's the place to do it. Disney Plus. But not at a a cost of quality. Werewolf by Night was a short, sweet thing. That's all. How How about a four episode series for Moon Knight? Get it all, get all your shit in, in half the episodes. Yep. You know, don't, f- don't fluff it just because you need to fluff it or feel like a, like, like they make the content, they make the rules. Like who cares? And there's no limit on what they can or can't, right? Do you know the system doesn't work like that anymore? Exactly, and I think yeah. they, I think they got too drunk off that. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I think they got too drunk off the Marvel machine. In general. Yeah. Yep. And it's funny to hear these words coming from Bob Iger as if he had nothing to do with any of it. (laughs) I mean, as far as I know, he was the CEO. In 2018, in in 2019. It's not like this other guy, Chapek. Uh, He wasn't in charge that long. It's not like we're talking about a whole different era of Marvel or whatever. Yeah. I'm sure that if, well, I I can't even say I'm sure because uh, Iger's saying this now. He's saying this now in 2023. Where was this language in 2019? Granted, he wasn't there for 21 or 20 and 21. Um, but come on, man. You have to take some type of blame. But Some no. responsibility. Right. You're the leader. 
you're taking no responsibility. You're saying Marvel did this. Who owns Marvel? What the hell are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> what kind of statement is that? My company did a bad thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's horseshit. And <laughs> and 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 that that takes us into uh the conversation about um about the strike and about what's going on in Hollywood. And I'm going to oh. and and so we'll start like this. A few weeks ago, I mean it's been it's been a couple of months now in fact. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the writers, the writer strike began at the time. We said, who knows how long this will go on? Like this could be months. And of course, hanging over us was the idea that the screen actors guild could also decide that it was time to strike for the first time in literally 60 years. Yep. Both entities, both unions have agreed to strike together. And Hollywood is now shut down. Damn. I thought Damn. I thought maybe to go over a list of 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 projects that were sh that were shut down, but there's no need to. They're all shut down, pretty much. Yeah. yeah. House of Dragon season two was like the only thing able to film because it's filming overseas and most of their actors are overseas actors, so yeah. they don't. They're not able. To. Some some special case. Right. Exactly. That's it. Con Ooh, Silva in the chat. Let's go. Anarchy Comics need a strike. They don't have a union. Well, that's what they're striking for. They're striking for the union. They have to make one first. Yeah. It's not what. <laughs> um, uh, this is this comes at a bad time, admittedly, for Hollywood that is trying to rebound from the uh, pandemic, which of course I believe some people say this is incorrect. I think you're crazy if you don't agree with this. The pandemic still affects people's behavior. It prevents people from going to see movies the way that they used to. That is a fact. Yeah, I uh, I was actually just listening to um, Manga Splaining and mm -hmm. Chip Zdarsky, um, you know, his co-host on that show. He was talking about um, going. He wanted to go see a movie. The, this episode aired in May. He was saying that uh, this was when Ant Man was, you know, it had been on for a little bit, um, and the only thing he could go see was Ant Man. But it was a crowded theater, so he wasn't going to do it. Right. Hmm. The numbers haven't been the same. They're just not the same. If you're not a Spider Man or a Batman or you know Tom Cruise, Tom Cruise had, yeah. yeah, like if it's not that. <laughs> It, let me say this. The Flash, regardless of what you think about that movie, if it came out in 2019 instead of 2023, it would have done way better. Way, yeah. way, way better. It wouldn't have, Maybe it wouldn't have been a hit. It certainly would have made a billion. Would not have made a billion, but it would have done much better. 200 million domestically. And so now that we're in this position that we're in, the writers and the actors are saying, hey, wait a second. With streaming, we're not getting residuals that we should get. You're cutting shows and movies off your streaming services deliberately in order to not pay us residuals that we're due. AI is a factor now. And you're trying mm. to replace us with AI. Did you guys see the story this week? That sure did. background actors were being asked to be scanned. What? And paid a hundred fucking dollars. To be scanned so that their likeness could be used in perpetuity forever without consent. Yep. What? Yes. Yep. You, uh, it's like in the, oh, well, I don't know if you guys have the context, but it's like in the uh, K-dramas where the same old man is acts as the same, like, grandpa figure in almost every K-drama. Or there's a few and you can just kind of like, oh, he's also in this one as a grandpa in this one. Uh, there's some K drama chat that just reminded me. You the, the, were just gonna see the same people in the background doing like peas and carrots, peas and carrots in the back. Yeah, the same four people. Was like, look, there they are again. They use yeah. the same algorithm. It's That's insane. Silly. This, silly. 
this is what your AI is trying to lead to. Hey, cost effectiveness. I don't I don't agree with it, but it's the mechanism there. You agree with the numbers though. You mm. fuck. I I I pulled a few tweets that I thought were interesting. So this one's from Nicole Demers, uh, who is a writer. Uh, and she said, or they said, I don't know their gender. Um, the first week of the strike, a young actor, early 20s, told me she was a background actor on a Marvel series. And they sent her to, quote, the truck, where they scanned her face and body three times. Owned her image in perpetuity across the universe for $100. Existential mm. is right. And this is the, to Top Lane's point, this is the sort of stuff that the strike and the way forward with AI is how you start to get regulation and you, you start to get those necessary steps to being able to curb AI to become more ethical in its use. So it sucks that it's happening now, but I think in the long term, it'll benefit the actor, the individual, because we have a reason to change laws now because we're kicking it out of the industry. Right. I, I completely agree. It shouldn't be legal. It should not be legal to do it, but oh, Marco, you disagree with that? Well, Dis disagree with the method. You, the method I think, yeah. I think yeah. Marco's trying to say, right, right. But I think that's the... being generous. You piece of shit. <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm saying that it should be illegal to without lawyers and contracts and approval oh, for sure yeah 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 to do what they're doing to send a background actor to a truck to scan their to scan them for a hundred dollars and this person didn't even know what they were getting themselves into that's insane now yep, yep. i'm gonna refer back to an actor you might not have heard too much from in a while jet lee huh. jet lee was originally going to be in the Matrix. Yeah. And I didn't know that. Yep. And he was, you know, in talks and everything else. And they wanted Jet Li to go and record himself in front of all kinds of cameras and a whole setup, doing all his moves, all his martial arts techniques that he has learned over his life at that point. He realized what they wanted was to scan him doing those things so that Warner would own his likeness and his moves forever. And when mm. he figured that out, he backed out of the project. He said, I'm what? not going to let them do that. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that, that recent? No, this was this was back then with the, 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 the Matrix. The, the, the original movie. Matrix. Oh, shit. That's insane. Yeah. Mm. They don't give a fuck. No. No, oh, man. What does what does Bob Iger have to do with creativity? Yep. Did Did you see the uh, the tweet that said um, Disney took away uh, creative paid for lunches or the whatever free lunches? Yeah. Yeah, um, and so the writers would split or give away, you know, their free lunches. So that yep. unbelievable, insane comic boom says it ought to be illegal for any person to contract away their likeness in perpetuity akin to not being able to consent to an assault. You can consent to a fight, but that is not forever. Mm. No. What's the, what's the issue with, with that? You can negotiate whatever. You paid for it, and you want it to be forever, then that's it. Unreal. What? <laughs> shouldn't be illegal. I don't know. I don't know if I I, I frankly I don't think I don't think it should be legal. I don't. I don't. What? I don't. Why do you think it should, Marco? Unless you're licensing stuff, then maybe that's the way. I mean works. that's what it is. You're but, licensing your likeness to this company to be used in perpetuity. But you're getting paid for it. You're agreeing to the contract. Once. And it's going to continue after you die. No, you're, I, 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 no I understand. I understand. Well, saying, I don't think you do. 
I'm not saying I don't think I don't think that's bad. I don't think it's bad to have a thing forever. It's not a thing. It's a person. It's their likeness. That's a person. It's not a thing, bro. Not once that person is not like like. Do you hear yourself? No, dude. Bro, if a person dies, right? Were they a person? They were. What does their likeness represent? It used to represent them. It used to or it does? Why would you use it if it didn't? Because they're not alive anymore. So what does it represent? <laughs> a person. All right. So. I can't bro, handle the mental gymnastics. Stop, bro. I can't. I can't. I'm sorry. All right. Fucking get you on the phone with Bob Iger. Come on. <laughs> So one of the most disgusting things that I saw this week, I, I don't know if you saw this, Kale, was the quote that's been going around that suggested that the studios were prepared to wait it out until writers and actors started losing their homes. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I, it, was, it wasn't even suggested. That was the quote. Right. What the fuck? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna pull it up because I should have if I'm gonna say something that crazy, I gotta have it in front of me. Um, so I'm gonna pull it up, but that's <laughs> that's what's been going around. Yeah, that's yeah. insane. Um, and and a lot of like uh, Adam Conover is the I I believe like the the union rep, maybe president for the Writers Guild. I'm not sure what their hierarchy is, but he's he's the guy in charge, um, and he's very much like this is. Um, this is a, a, a scare tactic. They're already slipping. They're already, you know, saying they're ready to go. But in the background, they're asking non-union actors to uh, rework on projects and rework on, mm. you know. Disgusting. So this is from Vanity Fair, who is quoting a deadline report that AMPT, which is the Alliance of Motion Picture and Television Producers, it, it, quote, is in the strike for the long haul with a plan to let the Writers Guild of America bleed out before resuming negotiations. The end game is to allow things to drag on until union members start losing their apartments and losing their houses. One source told the trade. What? And the thing is, they're already doing that by being writers. Word. Word. Stephen DeKnight, who is a big writer. Maybe you don't know his yeah. name, but he's a big writer. He so did. Familiar. He was the showrunner of Daredevil. He worked yep. on Buffy. Yeah. He had the, ca the Cabin in the Woods movie. Big deal. He said that for, for the Daredevil television show, he was supposed to get some back end. It was a sliver of back end. But when the rights moved from Netflix to Disney... Now, him and a team of people are auditing. They're, they're, they're attempting to audit Disney to get the residuals that are owed to them. What? God damn. This is insanity we're dealing with. And you know, you know who spoke out about this that I loved so much? Ron Perlman. Hmm. It's deleted. It's a deleted uh, video. That he posted, but I saw it. And in that video, he appears to be assigning the quote that I just gave to a specific person. Mm. So he says in the video, "You and I'm paraphrasing. I'm not. This is. I'm not reading from what he said. He said, "You think you're gonna wait it out until we lose our homes? Let me tell you something. There are a lot of ways to lose a home." Some of it's financial. Sometimes people find out where you live and they find out what you really think about them. And sometimes something bad happens to you. So watch what you say. You make $27 million per year and you're telling me you're going to wait out our, our strike? You can't take less money? That's what Ron Perlman said. Right. Which executive makes $27 million per year? Bob Iger. Bob Iger. None other than Bob Iger. Eeks. Bob Iger, for his part, 
had some choice words for this uh, for this strike. He said that he thought it was disturbing. Here's the quote to CNBC. It's very disturbing to me. We've talked about disruptive forces on this business and all the challenges we're facing. The, the recovery from COVID, which is ongoing. It's not completely back. This is the worst time in the world to add to that disruption. I understand any labor organization's desire to work on behalf of its members to get the most compensation and be compensated fairly on the value that they deliver. We managed as an industry to negotiate a very good deal with the Directors Guild that reflects the value that the directors contribute to this great business. How do you figure? Oh, and left out of this for whatever reason is he said that their their demands were unrealistic. What? Yeah. What are the demands? Well, there's a whole yeah, laundry yeah. list. But the demands seem to be, hey, we don't want to be replaced by AI. We don't want to be fucking scanned and used in perpetuity. And we want to be paid decently. We don't want you to be able to take our stuff off your streaming service and then not pay us anymore. That's a cheap workaround. Yep. What is Bob Iger thinking? With his wallet. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the state, uh, was it stakeholders? The, the, the thing is, it's capitalism. It's, you know, these companies have to show profit. They have to. If you are a business, it's literally to exist. You have to show profit. Yeah. But mm. that's impossible to continually show profit. It's literally impossible. Without cheating. Without cheating. Yeah. Yep. There's only so much money in the world. And there's only so much of it that any one company can get. And six people have it. Yeah. What's the like, what the fuck? What are we doing here? Like when does this end? In in the UK right now, there's a bunch of strikes happening in in the public sector. Teachers, firefighters, railroads, uh the railroads the, still? Oh yeah. The junior doctors are a big one because they have taken up uh have they haven't been given a wage increase uh i want to say since 1980 something damn not even with inflation so like the um they they are owed a 35% pay rise in line with inflation so that's what they're asking for uh and the government is like that's insane because literally everyone else is uh, a asking for 5 or 6% in line with inflation right now. The junior doctors haven't had a pay rise in you know 40 years. So the inflation, they're missing 35% in inflation. They have to account for it. To account for it so that they can live. That's wild. J junior doctors here are getting paid 14 pound an hour. That so you, so you go yeah you it's you go to the the hospital and the guy in the the ER is being paid 15 bucks an hour yeah to fix your fucking broken leg what <laughs> what that's crazy this situation is untenable it just is and everybody says oh boo hoo actors who are making millions of dollars don't feel like they're being paid enough well screw you because this isn't only about Tom Cruise or Matt Damon or, you know, yeah. whoever you want to say. This is about a lot of people you've never heard of mm -hmm. that work really hard, that fill in the movies that those mm -hmm. actors are in. That's mm -hmm. why they're striking, too. That's why they're on the picket lines, because it's not just about them. Ron Perlman didn't say what he said because he's struggling. Ron Perlman yeah. probably isn't struggling, but he gets it. $27 million per year. I've, I'm on record. I don't count people's money. If you got a bag that you can make, go make it. But you can't sit on your $27 million pile of money 
and look down from it on everybody else and say, hey, we're broke. We ain't got it. Take the fair deal. You can't throw a few shekels down from the pile to hit this one and that one. And that's the thing. They're not even asking for a massive increase. Hmm. The 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 writer specifically, the, the increase they're asking for is like 0.1% or something. Like a tenth of a percent. This is insane. This is insane. And, you know, we don't know how long this is going to last. We I don't. Mean, the last strike, writer strike, um, in 2008 or whatever. Yeah, it was 100 days. Very disruptive. Yep. As it should be. I'm not criticizing the disruption. Okay. Very disruptive to Hollywood. Now that the actors are on strike as well as the writers, we'll see what happens. Uh, expect a lot more reality television on your on your uh, screen. I'm sure David <laughs> Zaslav is very happy right now. I'm sick over this. Yeah. Do you know how many days we the writers have been at it? I think it's been it's almost over, three months. It's yeah, it's over seventy days. The last number I saw was seventy two days, but that was a couple of days ago. So. I don't even care to talk about what this means for superhero movies. As much as that's what this podcast is always about, we've, we've talked about it. I don't care what it means. I care what it means for the people who are struggling. I care what it means for the people whose lives are in jeopardy. I care what it means for the people who are relying on a person. To be fair, that said, they would wait it out until these individuals lose their homes. That's disgusting. They'd rather see you dead and homeless than pay you. So when you think about criticizing creative people for trying to get their dollars up, think about that. That's what the suit thinks of you. Hmm. All right. We'll leave that. Uh, and yeah, go ahead. go ahead. Quickly, this all goes back to the the Ian McGinty situation from a couple of weeks ago too. Absolutely. That poor guy yeah. died because he was working himself to death because he couldn't afford anything. Absolutely. How many how many other Ian McGintys are there in, in TV alone? Right. Yeah. Actors, writers in any creative industry. Name it. Yeah. Dying because they want to achieve a dream because they but they can't eat Let's read some comments. Dan says, good capitalism is being flexible to a new status quo. That's not what these executives are doing. Show me a place where good capitalism is being um, is being instituted. I feel like we all know capitalism is just run amok. And there's nothing keeping these studios and companies the world over. Forget about film. Forget about Hollywood. UPS. I, I had to cut it from the news today because yep. there's too much show, but there's a major strike about to happen. Oh, yeah, that's that's right. going to affect yep. comics. Oh. We're gonna, that's, that's next week's topic. Okay. Um, there's a major strike coming there. A lot of people are being unpa uh, uh, unfairly paid. They're not being paid what they're worth because capitalism won't stop being capitalism. Let well, alone the railroad companies. Right. And I'm not saying get rid of capitalism. I'm saying put a cap on capitalism. Hey. Yeah. There's a but limit. Not There's got to be. Right. Right. Um, it's not counting money. It's making sure people are fairly compensated for their labor. I mean, that's what I said. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, comic boom res residuals are tied to commercials generating income on traditional cable shows. But streaming only has limited subscriber income. No specific ads tied to specific shows, thus no residuals. Why is it that Comic hmm. Boom understands the problem, but these $27 million plus dollar paid executives and all these lawyers and bean counters couldn't have figured this dumb shit out five years ago? Well, Duh. They did. That's the problem. It's... If they had figured it out five years ago, we wouldn't be seeing these, all these damn shows. No, that's what I'm saying. They figured it out not the right way. Oh, right. Yeah, they figured it oh. out now. Yeah. They yeah. should have looked at Netflix's books because Netflix has never been profitable. Oh, that's right. 
Everybody copied Netflix. Yep. Unreal. Yeah, well. Uh, they can't keep justifying a hundred million dollar shows. Exactly. Nope. You barely can justify a hundred million dollar movies. And, and, and quite frankly, where are these budgets at? Secret Invasion, two hundred and twelve million dollars. According Indiana Jones was three hundred. Yeah, according to Kushik Rogers. Which, hey, thank you for being here. Where? Yeah, what? What? What do you even need that much money to make an Indiana Indiana Jones movie for? It's fucking Harrison Ford. CGI chase scene and the old guy mask, I guess. Yeah, the old guy mask is probably the fucking the most uh, uh, the cheapest thing there. Jesus Christ. We talked about the Matrix earlier. You look at the first Matrix movie. Look at how good that movie looks. And that Mm. was peak cinema. Yeah, the Indiana Jones films. Yeah. You don't need the budget. You can make a good movie by just making a good movie. It's unbelievable. Um, I saw I saw a tweet earlier. I think I retweeted it that said something like, uh, uh, "Someone who works with an exec, you know, this unnamed person said um, uh, the reason films aren't made that way with thirteen million dollar budgets is because it's a lot easier to steal one million dollars from three hundred million dollars than it is thirteen. Interesting." Yeah. All right, we got to move on as much as I want to continue this conversation and reading comments. We do have more show, if you can believe that, because we have the second presentation. Oh, fucking hell. <laughs> right? <laughs> oh, wait, what? You're still going to do that? I, absolutely. I got to do it. Holy cow. <laughs> uh, I got I to. Um, we hit the likes goal, by the way. We smashed it, so we are going to do the draft. Ooh, but... All right. Oh, damn, 30. Yeah, we hit 30, which is a beautiful number. Um. It is time for the history of the DC Comics implosion part two. Now, last week, we talked a lot. Uh, Last week, we talked about the rise of Jeanette Kahn to the role of publisher and her quest to make DC the premier comics publisher. The launch of the incredibly successful DC Dollar Comics Initiative and the impetus behind the DC Explosion. The DC Explosion was a strategy on the part of DC to combat Marvel's rise and to beat them at their own game, which amongst other things, DC thought was publishing a ton of books. So DC thought they would flood the market marketed as an explosion and they would take the reins back from marvel as the uh the kings of comics if you will now up on the screen if you're watching us live or otherwise i have an image of the way that dc promoted the explosion this was the first ad that appeared in dc comics that referenced the explosion explicitly I like that, Sylph. Thank you for saying that. A palate cleanser. Thank you. Um, And on this ad, it says, beginning June 1st, the DC explosion. More pages, more stories, and the most exciting superheroes in comics. Watch for full details next month. Now, on this cover, I can say that I recognize four, five of the characters. Dead man. At all? Martian for me, Man, yeah. Hunter, for me. Birdman. Did I, you say Birdman? I mean, <laughs> Hawkman. <laughs> I was thinking Harvey Birdman. Birdman. <laughs> Attorney at law. <laughs> I think I think there's one character on here I can't. Uh, maybe two. Uh, that I can't name because and and one that I'm not a hundred percent sure of. So huh. this is a this is almost a 50-year-old image. Damn. Right? God damn. And all of these characters presumably have had many, many, many more appearances now than they had at the time. My question to you guys, right out the gate, because we know that the explosion, things didn't go so well. Is this the way 
to promote your explosion with characters that nobody knows. At the time, though, people would have known these characters. Right. But they're not Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, Flash, Green Lantern, Aquaman, or any of those people. I don't think you needed them necessarily to carry the same significance that they that you would now. Really? You sure about I that? So. I think so. Are you sure that Superman Family wasn't selling 140-something thousand copies? That Batman no. Family wasn't? Those were the biggest characters 50 years ago. For sure, but these are also recognizable enough that you can sell an explosion. Is it? You can you can sell these as like side characters. <laughs> can you? Well, uh, hey, hey, Marco, go ahead and keep walking into his trap. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> look, I, look it... out for look out for that pile of leaves on the ground. <laughs> Surely there won't be a net in it. <laughs> the first time I saw this image, which was months ago now, I had the exact same thought. I don't know these people. I would not be excited if I if today you told me that there was going to be an explosion and it included this these characters, I would say, I don't, I don't give a damn. Um, and I'm not saying that there was no one who cared back then, but I don't think that it would, I don't, I just, I think Marco, if you were in charge of DC, well, you're, you're, you're iffy, but most people would say, hey, show them, show them the people that they love and show them the characters that they don't know yet. That way they anticipate a mix. That seems to make sense. DC decided, let's show them all these jobbers. Jobbers. Let's show them the B list and some of the C list. Not the best idea, DC. But that's okay. Not all of the titles that would be encompassed in the DC explosion started in 1978. This is something that I think a lot of people don't know about the DC explosion. And, and I'm excited about this because I feel like there are a lot of people listening right now who know about the DC explosion and the implosion, but don't know about the things that I'm going to say. This is the part to lean in on. The DC explosion actually started in 1977. Because I have a timeline. Here it is. I have a timeline, and it starts in 1977. <laughs> Actually, Kale, my timeline starts in 1976. I know. I was here last week. <laughs> so in March of 76, DC raised their prices from 25 to 30 cents with a page count of 36. Wow. In June of 77, they raised the price again of a standard comic from 30 to 35 cents. March of 77, we got the very first DC Dollar Comics, which we talked about. In April, we got the next batch that we talked about. In August of 77, DC brought back Aquaman after six years with no title. Can you imagine that? Hmm. Actually, I can. I don't know when the last Aquaman title was prior to the Johns uh, revitalization. Um... But they brought Aquaman back, canceled Superboy, DC Special, and Hercules Unbound. They brought back Mr. Miracle after three years hiatus in September, canceled Starfire in October, Richard Dragon Kung Fu Fighter in November, Isis in December. They canceled those titles to make way for the big boom. Here, let me see if I have it. I have it, yeah. Here is a list. Of the DC lineup of titles in June, July, and August of 1978. What is labeled as the DC explosion. That is up on the screen now. This is a crazy list of books. By my count, it's 52. Hey. I don't know if that's, you know, there has to be some deliberate. Maybe it wasn't deliberate at the time, but it became deliberate afterwards. Unfortunately, that's not something that I know. If you if you're not watching, and I and you want to know what these titles are, I'm a I'm gonna read them. So uh, it's it's an unbelievable list. 
Action Comics, Adventure Comics, All-Star Comics, Army at War, Batman, Batman Family, Battle Classics, Black Lightning, The Brave and the Bold, DC Comics Presents, DC Special Series, Detective Comics, Doorway to Nightmare, Dynamic Classics, Firestorm, The Flash, Ghosts, Green Lantern, House of Mystery, House of Secrets, Jonah Hex, Justice League of America, Commandi, Men of War, Our Fighting Forces, Secrets of the Haunted House, Sergeant Rock, Showcase, Star Hunters, Steel, The Indestructible Man, Superboy and the Legion of Superheroes, Super Friends, Superman, um, Superman Family, Unexpected, Unknown Soldier, War World, Weird World Tales, Western Weird Tales, Witching Hour, Wonder Woman, World's Finest. Then, the unpublished books. These were books that were featured, if you look at the list, if you look at the DC uh, Explosion ad, you'll notice that some of the characters that I mentioned are on this. Aquaman. And remember I said unpublished. Aquaman. Claw the Unconquered. Demand Classics. Mr. Miracle with Big Bardo. New Gods. The Secret Society of Supervillains. Shade the Changing Man. The Vixen and Western Classics. Huh. That is an insane list of books a lot of genre titles yes a lot a lot a lot this is years after the vietnam war by the way they're still publishing constant um constant war comics yeah they had the the war the gi but i mean even like the you know the what was it the western and the wacky western and all that stuff yep yep I don't got that now no like we said last week like they baked genre into the superhero so it became superhero plus right and it's worth pointing out that like the new 52 tried to reintroduce the genre books to some degree um and that i don't know how well that worked it was all-star western i think you had that and then i want to say there was some kind of sergeant rock or something like that maybe i'm bugging uh yeah, there's a Jonah Hex one. Jonah Hex. Right. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Um so a laundry list of titles. Hmm. Remember what I said last time? When we ended our, our presentation it was seventy seven and there was a, a a a bad winter. Really bad winter. Keep that in your mind as we as we move forward. Really Really, really bad winter. So June comes and goes. We get the explosion of books. This was the lead story of Newswatch in the Comics Journal number 41, August 1978. In an unprecedented move that has caused waves of shock and consternation to ripple throughout the comics industry, DC Comics has initiated a massive cutback of their titles. Canceling 17 titles and postponing indefinitely four new titles that already ske- that were already scheduled for publication. In addition to this, DC has laid off five full-time staffers and has changed its 50-cent, 25-page story format to a 40-cent, 17-page format. DC has canceled Army at War, All-Star Comics, Batman Family, Battle Classics, Black Lightning, Claw, Doorway to Nightmare, Dynamic Classics, Firestorm, House of Secrets, Commandi, our Fighting Forces, Secrets of the Haunted House, Showcase, Star Hunters, Steel, The Witching Hour, The Man Classics, Deserter, Vixen, and Western Classics. <gasps> all in one breath. All in one breath. They got rid of all of it. Damn. And do you want to hear the secret that most people don't know? Those books were canceled before sales ever came out. Oh, shit. We can't produce it. Sorry. Bye. Wow. Sales never even came out. So what what did you have running? Like Batman, Superman, 
Is that it? You mean what was left? Yeah. I'll, I'll show you what was left in a little bit. DC had to cut so much of their line. And it's because, well, it's attributed to one of the worst blizzards in North American history. The blizzard of 77. Now, I researched this blizzard because I was like, there is no, come on, you're blaming the weather. This is, this is silly. This is silly. So I looked into it. One of the worst nor'easters in North American history. Dozens of people died. Millions spent on relief, damage control, and getting supplies to the eastern U.S. Traffic frozen, so people had to leave their cars wherever they were. What? It devastated the package delivery services, making it nearly impossible for retailers to receive their comics on time. By the time many comics, mm. many comic books hit racks, they were older and went unsold. Which, because of the returnability policy at the time that we talked about last week, meant that DC would eat those costs. Remember what I said. This is proto-direct market. DC was relying on everything else. That's newsstands, that's, you know, grocery stores, that's all the rest of it. Those places did not receive their books. They couldn't. By the time that they did, people didn't want them anymore. And so guess what happened? Those books went back. And DC did not reap the benefits of having sold them. Devastated. This blizzard was so bad, it spawned, um, spawned music two books, and a board game. Music by who? No one that I, no one that I know. Just a band uh, uh, writing about <laughs> getting stuck for like three days under snow. It's like, I was in my car. I just thought it sounded cool that that, 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 that was the case. It's true, but I, just, I included it because I thought it was interesting. It's funny. Mike Gold, who was then DC Comics Publ Publications representative, uh, said in a July 1978 interview, from media scene number 31. It all starts with our yearly budget review meeting, which is held six months after our annual budget meeting. One gives you the, the money and the other checks to see how you're spending it. In six months, anything can happen. And this time it did. What we saw in May was a result of this winter's blizzard. And things just sort of rolled along from there, out of DC's control. To be honest, however, what happened was not solely responsible to these figures, but more due to the patterns which have been developing over the past several years. Why did the implosion happen? What caused the sales at DC to dip so badly? Last time we talked, everything was on the up. Well, that's because comics work so far in advance. Last time we talked, everything was on the up, but they hadn't yet received the financial, um, uh, uh, you know, check-in from mm. everything that was going on. The newsstand was already looking to get out of the business of comics. They didn't want to sell comics anymore, not at the rate they had been, because they weren't making any money. This was a cascading effect that started way before 77, and then finally started to be felt by DC Comics in 78. Mm. Things were bad. But mm. what about the savior? What about Superman the movie? I told you it would be out in June and it would save right. DC Comics. Yeah. Here's a picture that I have on, on, the, uh, on the screen if you're watching of Jeanette Kahn, Sol Harrison, who was the president at DC... And Christopher Reeves looking over, um, I think it was uh, um, fan entries or something like that, oh. or, or it was something like that. But they're they're together preparing for this, you know, this great, um, you know, this great movie that's about to come out and save DC. Well, any historians in the chat, any historians that are listening to me now, people with decent memory, will know that Superman the movie did not come out. In June of 1978. 
Huh? It didn't. The movie got delayed. Oh, no. The movie was delayed because of problems in production behind the scenes. They were filming two movies at once. They were filming Superman 1 and 2 at the same time. Off the, 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 the strength of the fact that Superman was so popular and they had such high hopes and faith in this movie that it would do well. So well that they need a sequel. And Richard Donner, he was fed up. He wasn't happy with how things were going. He was pretty frustrated. And so they kind of put things on pause. The movie got delayed. And it would still release in 1978, but way too late for the plans that DC had to coincide with the release of the movie. Mm-hmm. The what, what was supposed to be the tie-in was called uh, Superman World of Krypton. It was supposed to that story was supposed to be baked into Showcase, which was a series that DC had at the time. Because it was so late, they pulled that story from there and they released it as a limited series down the line, which was called World of Krypton. That is the first limited series ever. Whoa. That's cool. Yeah. So we got a little bit of history due to the uh Due to the delay of this film. Now, a lot of people lost their jobs. A tremendous amount of people lost their jobs. Thanks. So, March of 78, I, I do want to include this because it's pretty cool. March of 78 saw the release of Denny O'Neill and Neil Adams' Superman versus Muhammad Ali comic. Mm. Which existed because of Jeanette Kahn's reestablished relationship with Neil Adams. They were uh, DC and Neil were on the outs at the time. Oh, she, she brought him back in. She brought him back into the fold and this was a, a, a direct result of that. Wow. Okay. By August, DC had to cancel uh, four titles. The Aquaman that I talked about, uh, Mr. Miracle, Claw and Shade. In September, they canceled eight more. Not only that, but they cut the price down to 40 cents and the page count to 17. In October, they canceled another six. And that's how DC closed out the year of 1978 on their ass. Hmm. Having laid off all their freelancers. One guy who was writing Green Lantern kept his job. In terms of freelancers. And you know what happened? It sent everybody over to the Marvel side of things. Which I, I think is fascinating history of in and of itself. Um, the people that got fired then turned over to Marvel. People like um, uh, Larry Hanma, Larry Hanma, Larry Hanma rather, sorry, um, Al Milgram. So many people. Who knows what they could have done had they stayed at DC? Man. Yeah. Marco, you wanted the list of DC's books at the end? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, in 1979, the 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 um the, the image won't work for some reason. But in 1979, post the DC implosion, all you had was Action Comics, Adventure Comics, Batman, Brave and the Bold, DC Comics Presents, Detective Comics, Flash, G.I. Combat, Ghosts, Green Lantern, House of Mystery, Jonah Hex, Justice League of America, Men at Men of War, Sergeant Rock, Super Friends, Superboy, and the Legion of Superheroes, Superman, Superman Family, Unexpected, Unknown, Warlord, Weird World Tales, Wonder Woman, and World's Finest Comics. That's it. Man. So half, almost more than more half than the publication half. line. Yeah. Gone. Think about all the creators that represents. Yeah. It's out the door. So what happens next? What happens after this explosion completely backfires and becomes an implosion? What happens to all these creators that got fired? What happens to the work that was already produced? And why did the implosion happen? Well, that's what we'll talk about next week. Hmm. On part three of the history of the DC Comics implosion. (sighs) 
it's to me it's fascinating um go ahead marco it's a it's an interesting uh experiment in comics and i think one that was thought through but the circumstances around it caused it to fail and that's Mm -hmm. the curious part is i think there was strategy and idea and innovation here but the cards didn't pan out like that yeah it sounds like sort of the lessons that were learned was that it's better to hedge your bets yeah 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 versus the initial this was the opportunity it came at a cost and we lost this round but as that that does not mean we stagnate right we need the next explosion but to your point it was oh an explosion will fail it's a combination of things that that we'll we'll definitely get more into next week Mm. um i think dc chasing marvel probably led them into a pitfall that they didn't see coming amongst a lot of other things historically on brand right (laughs) <laughs> well, you know, looking back. Right. Yeah. Thank you all. Thank you uh, for the for the kind words. If you enjoyed this, uh, we appreciate knowing that. You guys already know all the ways you can support us. Um, thank you for those that do. Thank you for those that, that uh, are, are expressing their enjoyment. Um, we've got... I wanted to do four, but uh, we might we might do three. I'll I'll figure it out this week and let you guys know how we're gonna how we're gonna close out. But uh, yeah, we've got more in the tank to talk about as it relates to this. And if there are other subjects that you want us to talk into and dive into, let us know. Mm-hmm. Please. Yeah. What's next? I got ideas. These, what are yours? These are fun. To I have ideas. Us. Ooh. Oh. Okay. I forgot what I forgot what they were. Now, but I had one today, and I went, "Ooh, that could be good." Oh shoot! So if I remember, maybe I'll do one. Okay, that could be fun. Shit. Yeah. You know what else is fun? The draft. Mm-hmm. Not Excuse me. No, thank you. Yeah, not the the war draft. Oh, about to burn my card. <laughs> the comics pals draft. So this week, because we hit the likes goal, which you guys are tremendous about, we are going to be playing the draft game. And this time, we are drafting teams of Earth heroes to defeat World Breaker Hulk. For those of you who read World War Hulk, you know just how strong World or World Breaker Hulk is and how much of Marvel's heroes it took to defeat him. So we're limiting it to only Earth heroes. Who does that exclude? Characters like Thor. Characters like Silver Surfer. Or out of the equation. Why? Why Thor? Because characters... Because Thor's not from Earth. Asgard. So they have to have an origin that's somehow Earth-based. They have to be from Earth. Okay. Okay. Um, Huh. So... So, like, like, I guess... Oh, I guess it's not well. It's not Marvel, but let's say we use this example for DC. Technically, Hal Jordan was born on Earth, but his powers might be alien based. But he was born on Earth, so he as a Green Lantern. Okay, where a Superman would not be eligible. Gotcha. Okay, because he came. Yeah, he came from somewhere else. So interesting. This this okay. should be this should be tough. Oh yeah. Um, we're going. The rules are, you know, I'll roll. My dice, my trusty dice, the loaded dice, as Tyler likes to call them. Um, and the who wins is up to the audience. The metric is whatever the audience's metric is. doesn't matter how you judge it. However you choose to judge it is what's correct. We'll do a snake draft, and uh, we'll draft five characters for this one. Oof. Okay. So my, if nope. you guys could vamp for two seconds, I'll grab my dice, and we can get this rolling. This one sounds tough, dude. I'm... I know. Yeah. I like. I feel like it should be easy. It should be. I feel. Yeah. Like it should be easier. The the caveat makes me feel really dumb. <laughs> <laughs> I 
There's nothing to and I it. Don't, yeah, and I don't know why. <laughs> nothing to it. Remember last week how yeah. we all were like, what the heck's going to happen here? And then we ended up going yeah, for yeah. more. All right. So I've got my die. I've got my handy, uh, my Avengers die here. You can see that. Oh, yeah. I am going to roll first for Kale. Okay. And here we go. An eight. That's a pretty good number. Ten. Not bad. Okay. I'll roll for myself now. A nine. Ooh. Oh, here we go. And Marco. Let's go for the ten, baby. A four. Well, so Kale or myself, Kale, and Marco. That will be the order. Marco will go Less. twice. In this, yeah, yeah, yeah. In this one. Um, and then and then I'll go twice after or next one. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. All right. So, Earth heroes only. I'm gonna kick us off. I'm gonna kick us off with Iron Man. Hmm. 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 So okay, yeah. So I'm assuming this is we're sort of building like the uh, uh, the Illuminati in the gladiator situation that happened in world war hulk um i'm gonna say i I saw it in the chat and i'm gonna steal it before somebody else does i'm gonna say franklin richards oh my god oh (laughs) okay i'm gonna say captain marvel Um, carol Danvers, right carol Danvers, yeah And then the next one, and I was going to ask you guys, Apocalypse? Oh, but it has to be a hero? It has to be a hero. Damn it. All right. Oh, oh, mm, Scarlet Witch. Sure. Okay, that knocked out three of mine. (laughs) (laughs) I'm going... uh, Oh, wait, I'm up. No. No, I... No, Kale after me. Marco goes twice because now we go back down. Yeah. So it's oh, one, okay. two, three, three, two, one. Oh, okay. Right. Uh, Nova would be my second oh, that's choice. good. Which one? That's good. Take a pick. Who cares? Right. Nova. The Earth-based one. Okay. <laughs> uh, Richard Ryder, I guess. Yeah. All right. Um, I will draft Doctor Strange. Fuck. And I will draft Jean Grey. Unbelievable. <laughs> Yo, I'm I got knocked out, dude. What? Dude, you, you drafted twice. God. We're on uh we're on three right now. Yes. Uh I'm gonna say I'm gonna say sentry. Does he count? Yes. Okay, absolutely. great. Damn it. Um fuck. Uh Spider Man. Okay. Not bad. He uh canonically he at least has a strategy. <laughs> uh Juggernaut. No. Mm, no. 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 Not a hero. Yeah. Marco was stretching. <laughs> Beast. Oh, my God. <laughs> Beast? Okay. Beast versus Hulk. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Outsmart him. Uh, I just had an idea for my fourth one. Who was it? What's it going to be? Who was oh. it? Who was it? Well, mm, who do I have? All right. So Sentry. You, right now you have Franklin Richards, Nova, and Sentry. Oh, oh, I remember. Uh, uh, Quicksilver. Okay. Mm. All right. So do you go again? No, you do. Oh, okay. So I, so I go twice. Twice. All right. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um... I am going to draft. I'm going to draft Nate Gray, the X Man, which uh, is Cable without the techno organic virus. 
Mm. Um, and I'm gonna go with. I think he would count. No, you don't have five already. Uh, I have Iron Man, Doctor Strange, Jean Grey, Nate Grey. Oh, okay, last one. Yeah. Uh, I need a, ha- I need a hammer. Yeah, I'm trying to think of big guys like. Um. I guess. Damn, who am I not thinking of? Kale just had a cheeky smile, and I just took Century, which I'm so. I think I have a pretty good one. I think I have a pretty good one. Mm. Um, I'll go with Hyperion. Actually, let me make sure that he's he's from Earth because I I was gonna I was gonna ask that same question. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna make sure of that, and if I have to amend my pick, I'll amend it. But we can carry on the draft. Uh, my next pick is going to be Wolverine. Oh, oh <laughs> stop. So it says okay. he's a he's an eternal. They're from Earth. Oh, they're not. Yeah, they are. Okay. They're born in the in the planet. They're made out of the, the machine. They're literally from Earth. Yeah. OK. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Chad, if you have a correction on that, then let us know. But that's my pick. Harris's okay. Hyperion is not from Earth. Yeah, I'm gonna double check this. Okay. Uh. So I go twice. No, I go once. This is my last one, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Does Deadpool count? Sure. Okay. I don't uh, like my other one. He originated from the Microverse. Oh. Okay. All right. Um. Does that count? I don't know where that is. <laughs> it don't sound like Earth to me. Oh, wait. A, a microverse is a dimension that can be reached from the Earth dimension by shrinking with pin particles. Uh, I nah. think technically not, then. Yeah, I, would, I wouldn't. If it was one of you, I wouldn't count it. So okay. I won't count it for myself. Um. All right. So who the hell am I missing? You I know what? Him. Every team needs a leader. I'm going to draft Captain America. Steve Rogers. Okay. Okay. Motherfucker's going to die. You got that right. <laughs> uh, and then Kale with your last pick. No, is he... He needs one more? Yeah, because Kale has Franklin Richards, Nova, Sentry, and Quicksilver. Wolverine was my last one. Oh, Wolverine. Okay. All right. Yep. Glenn Richards. That's right. Yep. So that's it. Those are those are our teams. Man, this was tough. This one was tough. Marco got Car- Carol Danvers, Captain Marvel, Scarlet Witch, Spider Man, Beast, and Deadpool. <laughs> Beast is the only questionable one there. No, uh, he's not. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Uh, I got Iron Man, Doctor Strange, Jean and Nate Gray, Hyperion, or I'm sorry, not Hyperion, Captain America. That's crazy that you back to back knocked out two people, Sean. I did on on yeah. his on yeah. mine on, on my his list. list. Who did I get? Oh, Doctor, Doctor Strange, Strange and Jean Gray. Well, why would Literally you try to? Back. That's my territory, Jean Gray. Thought I could Ooh, sneak easy. it. I thought I could snatch it up. Wolverine and Cyclops' territory. Oh, fair. Uh, and Kale had Franklin Richards, Nova, Century, Quicksilver, and Wolverine. I like mine. Of course you do. So, who do you guys feel won this? Let us know uh, who you think won. Uh, <laughs> Top lane says I win by a lot. Yeah. Um, I should have picked Blue Marvel. All right. You know. I guess. I, uh, yeah, I really went. I really went the route of who would absolutely decimate the Hulk <laughs> in any way possible. I, I don't know, man. I think Nova, Wolver, Nova, and Wolverine are gonna die. What? Yeah, Wolverine's not. Wolverine's, Wolverine's not definitely. Well, I guess he he can't die, but my man is not in this fight. My man's getting thrown to Africa. Ah. It's fine. He'll come back and kill him again. <laughs> Easy. He can't beat the Hulk. Not this version of the Hulk. But my Wolverine can. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I see a lot of Kales in the chat. Yeah. 
a lot of kales. Um, it won't let me start a poll because I'm not. Let me see. Frankly, we probably don't even need a poll, but I'll I'll see if I can get a poll going anyway because I would love some official numbers from the people. Uh, yeah, a lot of start a poll. Right, All right, it. here we go. Who won the draft? Marco. <laughs> All right, there we go. So you guys answer that question. Who do you think won the draft? Before you vote for yourself, Kale, your hands yeah, up. I, don't, I, don't vote. Nope, not voting. The three of us can't vote. Yep. Because obviously we're going to vote for ourselves. It's Kale. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those numbers are moving. Those numbers are moving. Damn, eight votes already. Yes, keep the votes coming, please. We appreciate your votes. We need to know. For our own, uh, um, you know, uh, enjoyment, we need to know which one of us won the poll. It's an ego stroke. Yes, dance for us, puppets. <laughs> In all seriousness, though, uh, thank you guys for joining us today. Thank you for sticking with us. It's been a long show. Uh, we appreciate everybody who stuck around. You guys are phenomenal. You guys are warriors. Um, it's it's just incredible the dedication that you guys have um, to listen to us every week. We really, really appreciate it. It means the world. Um, next week, we'll have more history of the DC Comics implosion coming your way. We're going to talk about the UPS strike that couldn't be impacting comics and a lot more. Who knows what's going to happen next week? I didn't think that all this stuff would happen this week. Yeah. So you, you just never really know. Um, it's it's the wild world of, of, of media, of entertainment. Um, before we close, of course, patreon.com slash the comics pals is the absolute best way to support. It's not the only way. Showing up to the live streams is support, leaving us a like on the video or a rating or a review, wherever it is that you listen to us. Shout out to the people that leave us comments on Spotify. We appreciate that. That's huge. Anything you can do, if you're thinking about us and want to help us out, but you don't have, you know, money to contribute, there are lots of other ways to do it, and we appreciate it all equally. Patreon.com slash the comics pals is the way we most directly feel it. So if you want to support us over there, we give you back, we give back, we give some bang for your buck. Thank you to everybody that does choose to support us over there. Um, you get a lot out of it. Join our Discord server where everybody who chatted today almost is a member of our Discord, mm -hmm. uh, which is incredible. Lots of you that aren't, which is okay too if Discord's not your bag. We appreciate you showing up every week. But I think if you enjoy the conversations from the chat, you'll enjoy our Discord so much more. Um, it all is an extension of this stuff, of the topics that we – like a lot of the news gets covered in the Discord first and we come sort of to talk about it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Um. We've got our Pulp Book Club dropping August 1st, so it's a little way away. But if you want to get ready for that, uh, our book club on Pulp will be out at that point. Um, tune in for Pals Polls this, this Thursday at 6 p.m. Eastern. The poll's already up. It's up every Friday, so check that out. Uh, give that a vote. Let us know what you want us to be reading. Everything else at the Comics Pals. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Can't wait to put out an essay breaking down your teams in the comments later. I appreciate those, Perry. Thank you. Hmm. Perry Perry. Aaron, Aaron Ruiz with a nasty team. King and Black, Venom, Sentry, Scar the Witch, Jean Grey, Phoenix, and Weapon H. Jesus. That is huge. Uh, let's do the plugs. Kale. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Comics Pals. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram only. Don't come looking for me anywhere else. I'm not there. No, not there. Forget mm -hmm. it. Find me on Twitter and Instagram at Toto in To. That's T O T O I N T O W. You can find my work at Kaylor.com. You can follow me at Mr. Mark Renamoto on Instagram and Twitter. As for me, I am on I am on Instagram only at Sean Soapbox. Hit me up to talk about whatever you're thinking about. We're thinking about you and we're thanking you so so much for being a part of this episode today and every single week here live on YouTube or wherever else you listen to us. Thank you. We love you. We're the Comics Pal signing off. Till next time.